theory. And Mola. What's the situation? And Ryan. And we have to... Yeah, and Ryan. We'll just say yeah. that after him. Yeah, and then Ryan now. guy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No. So what's up, guys? How you doing? Welcome back to Monday's Stargriff. We didn't do last week because I was uh, moving about. Uh, but we're back now. So Ryan and I met for the first time. I think it was last week or something like that. And um, yeah, I had a great time at the con. How was your experience? It was crazy. Megacon was awesome. I... It's grown a lot since last year. Over 200,000 people made their way through Orlando Megacon over the weekend, which is more than San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, I think the only one it's trailing is maybe New York City Comic-Con, but it might even be catching up to that. It was freaking huge. Yeah. And we met about, we met literally hundreds of people throughout the course of the entire thing. We filled up a 700-person theater for our panel, standing room only, which is insane. And... I drank a lot, probably too much. Some would argue <laughs> at the meetup, but yes, yeah, it was good. Let me show the, let me show the happy photo. This is the happy photo. Aww. see, we're high Ryan tech looks, here. Yeah, Ryan looks super happy. I do uh, look happy. Yeah, man, I had a great time. I did not expect uh, any of that. It was a really big convention. It was cool. It's cool meeting everybody, hanging out with you guys, and. Uh, meeting all the fans it was amazing i can't wait to do it next year is megacon a new thing no it's been growing um right. it's been around for a while like at least since like 2015 or I something feel like, yeah. like i i haven't been down in orlando that long but as long as i've been out here they've been doing it um yeah and it's going to be about the same weekend like the first or second weekend in february be the same week as the super bowl next year so it's gonna be crazy super bowl won't be in orlando or anything but it'll just be the same week as the super bowl Okay, well, that's going to be pretty wild. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, Mahler and Mahler's just been chilling, not coming to Megacon, not hanging out with us. No, uh, avoiding you like the plague. People but... were asking like who he was. They were speculating which background character walking the around in the stream guys, like, is Mahler. The troll that I'm there, the more people are going to be like, oh, shit, they lied to me. He wasn't <laughs> there at all. <laughs> oh, I saw someone on Twitter was like, wait, he's not a black guy? <laughs> i'm welsh <laughs> but you know um I yeah i mean because between this and the previous star griffs like all the suicide squad shit happened on my end of stuff um i'm now done with it do you two even know much about that beyond the clips no i don't um, know anything about it I i've i paid attention to like kind of the entire saga was unfolding because i love the arkham games uh -huh. and then you know obviously same studio they're coming out with this people are like okay live service game combat looks a little funky don't know if i'm into it but it's rock steady so of course they're gonna do a good job yeah and uh from from the gameplay to the mechanics to the live service aspect of it to obviously the entire plot and the writing it looks like it's just a complete shit show complete disaster of a fucking game that deserves to be buried in hell like it's uh and it? it, What's going it's on with um it? i mean the history of it is the they wanted to make a game in the arkham verse being arkham uh, asylum city and night okay. and origins i guess right okay. uh, with this one is though the brainiac has come in and he's mind controlled the justice league and it's up to the suicide squad to save the world which involves killing the justice league and it's like that's impossible. okay uh well that's the first thing you'd think it's like how's that gonna like if you if brainiac's got the control of the justice league i think it's over guys <laughs> that's uh that's already it but you know the game is like the peak of pathetic in terms of justifying fucking anything and then Hold on. superman gets killed by the justice league yes at bat no no suicide squad <laughs> suicide squad wait superman and batman get killed by suicide superman, squad batman like harley the flash and... Green Lantern. Green Lantern. John Stewart's Green Lantern. They all get killed by the Justice League. That's fucking Suicide Squad. Jesus. With, with the help of Wonder Woman. <laughs> Not really. She only helps with Superman, but she doesn't right. even really help with Superman because they say that what she does doesn't do anything. Yeah, she, it should have killed him, but it didn't. She's the only person that has an honorable death. Yep. Uh, everybody else is just... And there is a little bit to be said for... I saw you having that argument with a lot of people. Well, it's called Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. What did you think would happen? And <laughs> hey, these are these are criminals. These are villains. You really expect them to be respectful? I would say no, but I would also say it like there's certain ways that you can do it to not piss everyone off, which is what they've done, especially when you have Kevin Conroy's last appearance as Batman to go out the way that he did. Now, 
Reportedly, he might be in another animated movie somewhere down the line, but this is absolutely his last video game performance. Well, and his last Arkham series games. Yeah. He, people love him as Batman in these. Of course, we love him as Batman in general, but uh, it fits in very well with like the state of the horrors of Star Wars, by the way. like It's uh, it, it's almost like tailor-made, because I assume, Theory, you've seen the clips of how they die, the Justice League, or have you not? No, I, no I have not. I'm in the dark about this. Please tell me. Oh, shit, Ryan, should we just show him it? <laughs> So uh, let's give you a brief rundown of a couple of them. Maybe, uh, maybe we show him the Batman one, but you can tell him about the other ones. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you probably I have Warner's all their clips. Finicky. I don't care if it gets copyrighted, but just no, it won't be copyrighted. It'll be, it's fine. It's gameplay. So yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. They, I know they just block the video. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I mean, I can show him all of them. The... Yeah, show, show me all of them. Chat, you guys cool with this? We uh, go a little off rails. Not I just, I just find it funny because, like, fighting anybody who hasn't seen this just to see their reaction to it. Because you're, how familiar are you with DC? I'm pretty familiar. Um, you know, like how we're in a weird state with a lot of media, where like they take things that you like and ruin them. And yes, let's just yeah. say, yeah, in a in a figurative sense, they piss on the corpse of the thing you like. Right, you like know? in Last of Us Two. In a strictly figurative sense. Not it's really seen that done literally. Wait, are you going to tell me like Harley Quinn pisses on Superman <laughs> or Batman or something like that? No, um, that would be probably better than what she did. But Captain Boomerang does piss on the corpse of Flash, literally. Yeah, so that's always fun. Uh, the black guy tells him he's got a big dick, though. So there's that in the game. Who wrote this? The people, the people who wrote this, did not write the other Arkham games. That, that was fucking obvious. I was gonna guess. I was gonna say um, it's... How can we do this? I guess if I share my screen, I can show you. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Um, because uh, I know where the fucking deaths are. All right, here we go. Everyone's talking about Sweet Baby Ink and everything being involved. Uh, uh, like a. Somebody who's been consulting a lot of different video game developers lately it hasn't gone well when it comes to insertion of a lot of other things. Here the we go. context uh, for the Flash is just they get anti-Flash tech from uh, some guy called the Toy Man who happens to have it. There's no other reason for this. He just walks into the HQ and says, I have a device that can stop the Flash. And then you shoot him almost indefinitely. And then you get to this point. <laughs> did you see that? Tell me you did. I was like, how do you like that? Now get your damn gun out! Is our team. Is the game out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been out for two weeks. <laughs> Catch me, friend. I'll kill you guys in a sec. <laughs> so what? crap. He just pulls over. <laughs> so Brainiac has mind controlled the Justice League, which is why they are on a mission yeah. to kill them. And oh, like they've gone rogue. Fired. He saved our lives. Oh yeah, for the record, Flash saved their lives twice in this game. Yeah. He ended his. So they just kill him instead of like capturing him or something. Yeah, I lo see this is probably all the normal people in the world have these thoughts immediately, and the game does not address this shit. So like, none of this team entertain the idea of saving the Justice League. They're all just like, we'll just kill him. I'm like, okay, that's that's a bit strange, guys. But all right, yeah, no, no attempt. Like the people who wrote this, you'd think they'd throw that in. Um, they have one line from The Flash to Wonder Woman at one point saying that they, she can't save them, they have to kill them, but they never give you any reason for this, especially really? when they describe it as like brainwashing, mind control. They're getting destroyed? Yeah. Like, like is the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, check this out. Proper respect to this fallen hero. Bye. Show a little class, man. That. Holy shit. Congratulations. Makes sense. The gods have cursed you in every other way. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, what you wanted, Boomer. Too bad no one. Well, you can imagine the people who find it hard to find it funny. Uh, when yeah. they're yes. fans of everything else, but yeah, that's the Flash's death. Not much care is given beyond that. Uh, Just then we fight. On. Yeah, Green Lantern. Green Lantern ends up in his Green Lantern undies. Thought. Yeah. Not so easy in a fair fight, is it? A fair fight. <laughs> Y'all look pathetic. Y'all. For a dipshit car too dumb to know when they're punching above their weight. You're just gonna go from Waller's prison 
<laughs> Brainiacs. <laughs> Which, by the way, doesn't even make sense when he's supposed to be mind controlled in nah. favor of Brainiac. Didn't right. you hear? No. Yeah. We're out on good behavior. What a what a line. We are not. <laughs> King Shark is the only thing redeemable in this whole King game. King Shark by is the, yeah, he's the best person I've seen in all of them. Sylvester Stallone, baby. Well, it's not he's not voiced by Stallone, but it, yeah, I didn't think it so. would have been nice if he was. I can't remember if they did not. Where do they show the fucking boxes? Like because King Shark ends up with the ring. You know what would have been cooler is if, if they just take the ring. They they make the first one that they take down is Green Lantern. They take the ring and then they just use the ring to like, I don't know, imprison all of them until you know they take Brainiac down. Also, anybody who's like wants the fucking Green Lantern shit represented properly is that the ring doesn't. It, it's not like an. Uh, it's not like a technology. It's not like a gun. You can't just yeah. pick it up. Yeah, you have to be worthy. Yeah, and uh, uh, you see that uh, in the uh, background though. And of all the people, yeah, of all the people that could like use it, it wouldn't be King Shark. You know what I mean? Of course, he's got green boxers. It's literally uh, green lantern symbols on. It. It's like merchandise boxes that they put. Yeah, in. like I have a pair of those. Very yeah, cool. Um, then you can get. Let's get Wonder Woman's death, which um, maybe I should save Wonder Woman's for after the. After you see how all the other ones are disrespected, then you can see yeah, how nice we'll do, Wonder Woman's is. We'll do Superman next, then we'll do Batman, and then we'll do oh, Wonder God. Woman for the contrast. Oh God. Superman's is one of the quickest in terms of like just <laughs> he they get gold kryptonite which is going to be specifically this so is much more effective now, against this Superman. Dickhead. At least they have a great Australian accent. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. It's not great in at all. Here you nice. go. Yeah. Shoot him and then so is he infected by kryptonite at this point? Well, so yeah. what happens is he's he's mind controlled by Brainiac, which makes him it changed his DNA so that he's immune to green kryptonite or mostly immune anyway. And so then they have to make a new kryptonite that he's now hmm. weak to, and then they make bullets out of that kryptonite. And you know, they find ways in the narrative to just get around the fact that all they want to do is have you shoot. Just shoot constantly That's, at well, everything. Every character just has a fucking, essentially a machine gun. And just they're just, shoot. you're just shooting, 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 shooting. Or boomeranging. Looks like just the four of us sent your ass back to Krypton, kal <laughs> Little snake taps out this time. Really hope he's dead. Don't they realize that this has pissed so many fans off? I don't understand how they wouldn't know that. There's just so many other ways of going around it. Like if you want, you know, Justice League to lose, there's just easier oh, ways. Oh well, of doing the way that people thought they were going to do it, and I thought this would make way more sense, is that they they steal Batman's tech to do all of this. That mm -hmm. Batman had contingencies for all of them, and then they take it. Uh, like I said, the Flash is just lucky that he happens to arrive. Uh, they get yellow lantern rings or whatever from batman's collections like okay i guess that one counts the gold kryptonite comes from lex luther analyzing batman's dna and they beat batman well i'll show you that one next but th this is pretty much it for, uh, this is it for superman In self -defense, since they were all totally like just remember when you're writing something like this like we just removed superman from the world like probably should <laughs> have some impact maybe i don't know a titanic uh, battle yeah. a good Glorious battle, but one foe remains. It's like, well, let's move on to Brainiac. Like, okay, Superman. It's like some of these shots are funny because you can just see Superman's just fucking corpse behind them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those <laughs> are the funny ones. Dead. <laughs> it's like, okay, uh, but yeah, well, now let's do good old, good old Batman. This is the one that went viral, by the way. I'm surprised you wouldn't have seen this already. Like I said, the context you really need to remember is that this is Kevin Conroy's Batman from games that are yeah. beloved in this series. This is the Arkham Batman. Yeah. So this is after all the Arkham games. Yes. yes. And this is canon. This is not some like shift. According to, to them, but I don't think Eddie Fad will consider this canon. So what? what are they dead now? Uh well it remains to be seen. We get in uh season. Well, you gotta wait for the season two patch after yeah. three months of release, and then maybe you'll bring them all back. Maybe that was their plan and they actually thought that would work. Unfortunately, there's now fewer people playing this game than Arkham Knight.
which released yeah. nine years ago. <laughs> the plague town on this already shrunk by B Man ninety nine says this makes Rings of Power look amazing. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> let's not go crazy, all right? The Disney character. We're two for two on killing your boys so far. Ah, love makes it worth the pleasure. <laughs> Oh wait, what the fuck? I think you're a team now. You're herd animals. What? Dependent on someone else to survive. Like you, Harkness. An illiterate alcoholic who's yeah, desperate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy's a deadbeat dad. Sharky's a freak who'll never be a real boy, and I'm... What was it? Oh yeah, I never was too bright. Get some new material, jerk off. You know, Joker? Used to be real good at hurting people with words. But you, boop. Even when you're evil, you're still too good. I fucking hate her voice. Hmm. You had a good run, Brucey. Flying around Gotham, punching bad guys. He just keels over? But no. Long -term no, give it a sec. Emotional damage to everyone you know. You see? See that? Causing long-term emotional damage to everyone you knew. That's Batman's the real problem <laughs> in Gotham. Causing long-term mental and emotional damage to everyone you knew. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's our turn now. After all we've been through. Oh, bet you didn't think it'd be me at the end. Huh, Are we done with your bad stand-up routine? Almost. But you always gotta end on your best joke. No way. Bye, Batman. Holly Quinn shoots him in the face. For us bad guys to save the world. Man, these writers are so goddamn stupid. They don't realize how important these characters are. You can't just <laughs> shoot them in the face and kill them. Like it imprison them or something. I mean, it's just uh, God, it's so stupid. I just don't get it. It's a, it's just the same whole last Jedi thing. Oh yeah, dude. Well, people compare it to Luke. People compare it to Joel, right? From uh, yeah, Last of Us Two. Joel and Luke. Batman is in there. Uh, <laughs> is up with him now because of a lot of context. And you know what's annoying is seeing so many people talk about it when they have no idea what they're, they're even talking about. They're like, "Oh, so Batman can never die?" It's like you don't even you don't even know what history was being dealt with here or what the fans are talking about. You just yes, jumped in. Batman can never die. Like it's literally like you don't show Batman ever dying. Or if there are, or like... I, I think if you wanted to do a game like this, there's no reason to put it in the Arkham universe. No, you know no, I mean? no you, that's like, why I thought this is like some segue, you know, uh, multiverse shit. Now they are bringing in some like multiverse Joker for this, aren't they, Mahler? He's a playable oh, God, character. Have you seen him? Oh, yeah, my God. yeah, yeah. Dude, the Mark Hamill Joker from the Arkham games is iconic. The fucking Joker they're bringing in for this looks like a Zuma. I I can't take it. <laughs> it's so like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> he, looks like he's, he looks like he's on TikTok. Like, and I I wouldn't be surprised if they have that in the game that he has a TikTok profile that he uploads to. Like, it's probably Bro, you're like in the middle of a fight and he just stops to do a fucking TikTok dance. Yeah, and they would be like, this will appeal to. <laughs> I'm the... just making it up, but like, that's probably what they're doing. Well, in any case, uh, this is Wonder Woman's death. Now, with everything you've seen, Theory, just, just let us know if you notice any difference with how they handle this. Sure. Should have taken our chances with the nuke. It's about time you saw things from my perspective. Hey, is that fucking... <laughs> yeah, yes. That's yeah. Amanda Waller, though. But yes, Seer Junda? Seer. Yeah. Yeah, people would tell me she pops up at everything, and I was like, I've managed to, like, avoid all the other it games. Literally looks, yeah, like, it literally looks... Anytime they, make it they look need, different? like, a random black voice actress, if she, if she pops up.
I did pretty good in, um, what was it, Fallen Order, or Survivor, but I just thought her character was lame. I mean, she's fine as Amanda Waller, it's just the writing. Yeah. Kind of fucking yeet. Yeah. <laughs> <The> baseball. So she's, she's really going infected. to town. She's not infected? She's not, no. <laughs> no, she's like the only one except Flash, but then Flash gets mind control because he saved the just uh, the Suicide Squad. Like yeah. it's uh it's just painful to fucking know this story. <laughs> This was so confusing to watch too because they hadn't told you at this point the green kryptonite no longer works on Superman. So you're just sort of watching him not give a shit about it. But then also what you're gonna see in a minute. Yeah, it's like <laughs> so much awkward looking too. Ain't it a novel idea, Superman but evil? Yeah. yeah. Not like we saw that with Christopher Reeve. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have done that, Shark. That's Superman. He'll kick your ass. She's with us. <laughs> oh, shit. What? Ineffective, but it could go through his whole kind, fucking heart. Kind of effective, but not. Kind of effective. I thought he punched through her. I'm sorry, kal -El. Also, calling him kal -El is triggering, but that's a different thing. kal -El, no! <laughs> Look at that. This Please. does not kill him, by the way. Pretty sure he'd be dead. There's a chunk of kryptonite in his fucking heart. Like... It makes him breathe funny. She gets back up. Hmm. Fucking melts through her shit. Holy shit, dude. It's purple now? That means it's like the red power. force lightning. That, yeah, that, that, means he's, that means he's really serious. Did it melt through her? I'm not entirely sure. Uh... He's all powered out. What? Remember, eye laser just left to right, kill them all. But I mean, no. Nah. Yeah. Okay, well he could have just. He doesn't have right any energy. Them. He lost. He lose, used it all on Wonder Woman, but he can still fly away. He could have just flown through them. Yeah. No. No. Literally, like, separate them. <laughs> this fucking music, dude. She's a female hero, Mauler. <laughs> like, what is this? It should have killed him. If you recover, be prepared. Shark, help me carry her in. We got medics inside. 
Just it's too stupid. late for me. I thought the four of you couldn't achieve anything. Prove me wrong. Is that what happens when Amazonians die? They turn to like brass or something? I don't, I don't know what's, what we're supposed to make of it exactly, but it's dead. They were shaped out of clay. Yeah. Right? Is that what's happening there? That she's I don't playing? Know. I don't know, but like that's... You having a clay? But I believe that's... Looking sharp. Isn't that how uh, Amazons were made? They're like shaped out of clay. That's what happens when you leave it in the kiln for too long. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How do we do now? Task Force X, get inside. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, it's it was just so insanely noticeable that like you piss on the Flash, you put uh, the Green Lantern in his boxes, you tell Batman that he's the cause of suffering, Superman is dead in the background, and then Wonder Woman gets this like choir to send her off as she slowly perishes while encouraging the heroes to do the right thing. It's like, hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting choice you got there, guys. Yeah, seems like a stupid game. So Wouldn't a couple... to have some respect for the other heroes, you know? A couple well, months I... before it came out, there was an audio leak along with a description that said how Batman was going to die and mm -hmm. people got really fucking pissed. And it's, it turns out to be exactly what happens. So Arguably it was worse. just, yeah, it was just a, a nightmare waiting to happen for them. How do you think they're dealing with the backlash? The... I mean, that's pretty stupid, man. <laughs> uh, I think they're already trying to announce that uh, they're going to release like, you know, DLCs or whatever that will contextualize this differently. That the Justice League are actually fine. Don't worry about it. This is all clones or robots or alternate dimension. You'll be fine. They're not all gone. Please don't. Please keep playing the game. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, I'm all right. They will play something else. The Arkham games were the best. Oh, they're fucking badass. I've been. I've streamed all of Asylum and uh, going through City now, and I'll probably do Night and Origins. And it's just, um, it's just kind of neat to go back and be like, oh yeah, these games are actually amazing and badass, and they hold know. up so well. And they take so much from the source and they put it into the games to try and, you know, spread more to more people through a different yeah. medium. That's what adaptations are hopefully going to do. <laughs> like, you'd like that, wouldn't you? If it, you know. So but this... as, as of 30 minutes ago, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, 3,000 people playing. Batman Arkham Knight, 3,700 people playing. So, and when did Arkham Knight come a, out? A decade ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. What about like Arkham City? How's that doing? Just kind of tells you that hey, maybe fans want to play their heroes or like you know at least not see them die would be cool. As um, because I'm usually on the on the team of like there's no story you can't tell as long as you do it well sort of thing. And like I'm even yeah. on. I think you can kill a Batman, but my God, like if ever I was challenged with that, like kill him in one movie, I'd be like, we gotta. That's tough because killing Batman is one of he is the character for no because he's Batman. It has to it has to be done kind of like the injustice, whether it's the series or the games, right? It's like you have to establish somehow that this is some sort of alternate timeline. That that's the only way you can really get away with that kind of stuff. And I think if you do it in small doses, it can work out really well. And you can get stories that you never thought you'd see before and things like that. But it you, you can't pretend like it's a main timeline thing. And when part of advertising this was that it's part of the Arkham timeline, that this yeah. is Arkham City Bat or Arkham uh, Arkham timeline Batman and all this shit, that is really the the biggest sin of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's tough to to get away from that. Yeah, well, you know, hey, they're gonna learn, you know, from what the fans want with the outcry. And uh... well, this is this is gonna do a big dent in Rocksteady. This is they need the game to be way more successful than this. And what's well, funny is the Avengers game is practically triple as successful as this, and that got removed. So, I mean, three thousand people playing what, what per day? Like concurrently, like as I spoke thirty thirty minutes ago, there was three thousand people actively playing the game. That's nothing in the world. In the world, well, on Steam, but yes. Oh God, that's horrible. Well, it's really pretty bad. Period. All-time peak on release: thirteen thousand five hundred. 
Dude, that's horrible. We get that's video insane. views higher than that. <laughs> I know. It's, it's not good at all. Well, because once more people pointed out, I, I uh, premiered the Super Academy playing it on Moolah before this today. And I think the, the peak amount of people watching that outdid <laughs> that the peak amount of people playing the fucking game. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, God. That's funny. Oh, it's going to cost them big time, and they're yeah. going to. You, yeah. what's going to happen is there's going to be some guy who's like, "How the fuck did this get made? How did nobody stop you guys from making all these stupid decisions?" And then they'd be like, "Well, we figured people would enjoy it. I don't we know. Thought we <laughs> wanted to give Justice League fans something, you know, to have fun with. It's like, yeah, okay, you could do that, but maybe just have like the heroes captured or something. You don't. I don't know, dude. These people are so out of touch. I think I really well, don't the, think um... they understand anything that they're doing. The obvious thing, if they wanted to, you know, not piss everyone off, make something that was fucking halfway decent, is that uh, you have a game where Batman is the only one that escaped Brainiac's mind control, and he has to bring down the Justice League one by one with everything he'd planned prior in case something like this happened, but that he reaches them, you know, as a friend, but also mechanically defeating them, you know, in a very specific and different way for each one, but doesn't kill them, right. captures them all, dismantles them all, you know, and... <laughs> I'm with you right there. So, um, shall we shift to Star Wars? Sure. What? Well, we have a bunch of new news. So apparently, there's a a rumor that the Ray movie and the Mandalorian movie come out the same year. That's exciting. I yeah. So if if we remember back to when they announced these initial slates of movies. I think they had one set to come out in like May of 2025 and another one for December of 2025. Yeah. And I think between the the writer strike, the delays, all that stuff, I really think everything's kind of just been shifted almost an entire year effectively. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's still kind of what the the timeline is. I think you're looking at, you know, 2026, you know, May 2026 for Mandalorian and Grogu, what a great name for a movie. And uh, then December that, for the Ray movie. Is that the name? That's what they're going with, yeah. Nice. Mandalorian and Grogu. Kind of like Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> I mean, Deadpool that, and too. Wolverine, like, yeah, that, I could go with that. That's fine. Mandalorian and Grongu. Grongus. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, because I don't know what it's going to be about. They could go in any direction they want. Truly. I don't. I don't know if they know. I mean, th that's kind of like a two-edged <laughs> sword, right? On one hand, it's like, oh, it's really cool because you know, th there's just they're free to explore all kinds of stories. But at the same yeah. time, there's no thrust. It's like we don't actually have any reason to be like, oh, they're going to deal with X. It's like, well, no, we're going to have to wait and see what whatever they're going to pitch. Well, that's the thing is that you know, if it's 2026, we should get like a Mando season four to kind of you know, so we we don't have to waste time in the movie establishing like what's going on, or they're just going to jump right into it because. They can't pull the same crap that they pull with us with the shows and the movie, right? Where it's like, you know, eight episodes of bullshit, and then finally like the last two episodes actually move somewhere a little bit. So hopefully, you know, they get to the point within like 20 minutes of the movie. <laughs> Leave I, another like maybe two hours. I actual, think it's uh, tough because what what is there for them to do? You said they can do anything. The reason they can do anything is because exactly. what they've done everything that they should have done with the characters, right? They have basically yeah. restored Mandalore, right? That was what they did in season three, right? So they, they've like, they've restored Mandalore. You got people Epic. back on there. Bo-Katan's the queen, queen Mandalorian now. Um, mm -hmm. You were, you had this mission to get Grogu back to the Jedi. You wrapped all that up in season two. You undid it in about 15 minutes of time in Book of Boba Fett. And now he's just back. And now they're, they're literally just kicking their feet up on a random, at a random spot, you know, at their house. What is like, what is there for them to do? You could like do a lottery of just all the different things that could happen. It's like, oh, Grogu's being called to a part of the universe or Mando needs to go somewhere to help someone do something like, or yeah. Could be anything. Yeah, I just hope it doesn't tie into the sequels. Because there's mm. still, this is a, uh, I think it's 10 years after Return of the Jedi now. After all the time. We're getting there. there. <laughs> We're yeah. chugging yeah. along. But eventually we have to get past 9ABY. <laughs> you know, eventually. Yeah, um, I think it's 18 years left. And then, <laughs> and then the sequels start. So at this point, you know, Kylo is, Ben is born. Uh, I think he's like five or something. Or a little older. Uh, what do we got going on? Luke's trying to build the Jedi Order. 
Luke's got those droids building the building the the yeah, huts the, the that he's droids. Yeah, gonna yeah, try yeah. to murder his child or his nephew in. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, this one, you know, I'm gonna murder my nephew in. So let's uh, make. We're already got this one marked make, out. Yeah. Let's make the roof really easy to collapse so that you know he can get away. The, the, um, thing, the thing is, it, to me, uh, it's always been leading to the sequels. We've seen that in all the content in each and every season. They've had connective tissue. When they made the series, that was the first announcement from Favreau and Filoni, like joint statement, basically saying, hey, we really want to connect all eras of Star Wars from original trilogy to prequels to the sequels. Like, that's how they build this show. Yeah. And that is what they've done, you know, yeah. to a certain extent, bringing in these characters from Clone Wars, uh, bringing in some of these characters and these things from the OT, and of course, yeah. making the connections to the sequels, whether it's about cloning, whether it's about this, like, Shadow Council, whether it's, um, you know, we even saw what's his nuts dad, um, What's his nuts? You know what I'm talking about? Dom Hall Gleason, uh, Hux. We saw yeah. Hux's dad yeah. in yeah. Mandalorian season we three as part did. of that council, right? So it's all leading to the sequels. It's, there's no retcon; like it's, it's they're fitting it in. No, but I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna create their own timeline in between. So they're gonna do this whole thing with Thrawn, and then they're probably gonna kill him by the time uh, the sequel starts, or like banish him to Peridia, most likely. Yeah, because they couldn't kill somebody. Yeah, that'd be hurt. that'd be terrible. Right. Yeah. So, except for Luke and Han. So, I think they're probably what they're gonna do is probably just gonna anyone that they don't want in the timeline of the sequels or whatever the originals, they're gonna just banish them into some sort of like imprisoned galaxy or planet where they just can never return. Or it's gonna be super difficult for them to return, and they'll start like a whole new thing over there. Well. So when you say a different timeline, you just mean they're going to do something in between. That's what you mean, right? Yeah. I don't mean okay. like like multiverse shit. Mm -hmm. That would be horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but the way they can kind of get around that multiverse stuff while still having the same sort of effect, I feel, is if they do that Peridia thing. Because it's like another galaxy and you can't really get to and fro. Unless you're Ezra. Unless you're Ezra. And you or Ahsoka. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm anything is possible yeah but i think either ahsoka season two or mando movie is going to be i mean look like i keep saying it's going to be interesting because i've like the way i would write it at least in my head seems interesting but the way that the board executives get in there and meddle with shit uh, I, I think it really f's things up but i feel like with Thrawn there on Dathomir and then the, the Night Sisters and all that shit, I think it's going to be dope in the sense that they could resurrect someone or they could create some sort of a new villain. Uh, you know, Asajj Ventress could come back in some sort of way. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> gonna, you know they're going to do it, Ryan. You know they're going to do that. You killed him, by the way. <laughs> you know they're about, like, like we'll there's no, like, imagine that they, they want. They want. They need a new female character who's badass. <laughs> Don't we have shit. a fucking enough of them, Jesus? No, because oh they gosh. suck. Ray sucks. Reva sucks. So who's a dope ass female character who's a little bit dark side? Asajj Ventress. Who's a dope character? Well, in my opinion, that's on the light side. Ahsoka. So they're going to actually. I feel like they have to make more proper female characters like Asajj. So someone badass like Talon and Asajj. Those would be sick. It's it's not like shitty Reva and shitty Ray. Don't you agree? Well, um, how about we get a TV oh, show I... for uh, Kamari Vosa? What about that? Oh, yeah, it'd be fucking awesome. Let's do Kamari Vosa. I would love that. I would I would like to see a Django Fett series. I'd rather see a Django Fett series. It's a Fuck direct yeah. fucking one to one of the Bounty Hunter game than I want to yeah. see Book of Boba Fett. That's for sure. Darth yeah. Tyrannus ordering the bounty on Kamari Vosa, and we even get to see other bounty hunters fail, oh like my God. um. What was his name? Montross. Montross. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. Yes. Do I'm, on the, I'm on the hunt. Yes, dude. Oh God, that, that's it's one of so my easy favorite to do too. Star Wars games of all time. It's awesome. And it's it's like Pip is built to be turned into a high budget TV show or a movie. Easy. Yeah. They but, could. But, but to, to answer to answer your question, no, I don't think we need a bunch of fucking force users running around the galaxy that have no act no connection to Luke Skywalker at all in this era where people have supposedly forgotten about force users again. You know what I mean? I, I just I just don't think we just need to throw a bunch of force users at every situation. Um, what I think this should be is the new republic actually combating a threat. <laughs> right? Yeah, that, that, that's what this should be. But now what I they've also... had to do is make the new republic 
in just a couple of years, completely incompetent because yeah. that's the only way they can possibly justify allowing what was allowed to happen. And just to make sure you know that Hera and Leia and Mon Mothma and any other one with two X chromosomes, they're the only ones that really know what's going on. They're just being held down by all the dumb men in the New Republic. Like that, that's kind of what the Ahsoka Well, that's what I'm been. saying is I, I feel like if we had some badass chicks out there, we could actually start to further the freaking plot because these Hera, I think, is just written so poorly in the Ahsoka show. We're like, how is she able to hear what's going on in the world between worlds? <laughs> mm. How was able to Jason? Well, well hold what, on. What, what's it? What's hold his on. name? Theory. His name? Anyone can use the force. No. Yeah. Okay. But come on, right? Right. You gotta, you gotta train of course, for... Hera. Of course, Hera can use it. No, but how the... can she hear the world between worlds? It makes no sense whatsoever. I feel like... Even even the, J- the Jason Sindula guy. Like he, he it's been can't... addressed before, but the the thing that kills this is Star Wars, as the world we saw in the OT and the prequels and everything else wouldn't be that way if everybody had access to the force you'd be seeing i'm not saying everybody would be going around floating stuff but you'd see a hell of a lot more force power usage it would be in all industries it would be fucking everywhere and it goes well beyond telekinesis this shit like you'd have access there's all kinds of people in all kinds of it's out of control at that point like the world would be different right. it wouldn't be but, like that but george did say everyone can use the everyone can develop this, the force but not to the same he, extent so, well, so he, hold on he said that in like 1980 while he's doing an interview for Empire Strikes Back, he significantly changed that for the prequels. Well, like once, the he, once he started, well, once he actually started to like flesh out the concept to put in the movie for midichlorians. And there's quotes of him out there saying, if you don't have a certain midichlorian count, you cannot access the force, period. Like he says that in the archives. He did. The... Yes. Well, it's oh, also, it, I, I assume that. there are a couple of interpretations of what that statement would even mean, right? Like, like everyone can use it. So that when you have, um, any uh, anyone can be an artist, but an artist can't come from anywhere. Or, or I forget the Ratatouille one, but the point being that it, it could come from anywhere, but not everyone can be one. Right, right. He needs to. Well, you need to train for it, and you need to have the I'd say the propensity to be. Yeah, like to um, be. there's no reason why we couldn't get a Gungan Force user, but at the same time, not all Gungans are going to be Force users or something right. like that. Right. Which is the okay. obviously the reasonable take, and I think that the world represents that. We don't. We're not seeing force users everywhere. We would be otherwise. Yes, I agree. You know, like and, water. And, and also like, um, if there if there was like anyone at training hard enough can use a force. Why the why the fuck is there a big list of force sensitive children out there that maybe the empire is trying to get ac- or the emperor is trying to get access to? Why would well, that be an entire plot in Clone Wars and TCW by Dave Filoni if that was really the way things worked? Because those kids have probably like a higher propensity to use the force than like fucking broom boy or, or whoever. Why, why didn't Yoda just go out and kidnap fucking 30 <laughs> random homeless people and take 50 years and teach them all how to be Jedi Knights and take yeah. down the Emperor? If anyone can use the force. Yeah, that's true. It's like Sabine, it's though. She doesn't, she doesn't, she can't ever be as powerful as Anakin or freaking even. I'll give it time. Well, you're right, but no, like. Nobody can be potentially as powerful as Anna, right? Okay, but I mean, like, but, you know... But, but what did we see her do, though? We saw her literally push Ezra, like... I know, it's bullshit. Cr- that's, a, that's a lot, dude. That's this bullshit. is not moving a little cup. This is not no. a little bit of force. This is, you have opened it up, and it's a fucking river torrenting through you now. But do you, do you buy into the whole, like, she is Tor Vizsla's, uh, what should we call it, ancestor? Or Tor Vizsla is her ancestor? Um, you know, potentially. Like, I think you can, like, make an argument for that. The, the problem for Sabine, for me, is she's already an interesting enough character that's good at so many other things. She doesn't need to be a Jedi, too. Yeah. Like, she absolutely doesn't need to. And to thrust that on her, I think, is just stupid. Yeah. And you, you could just let her be a Mandalorian. She's already, like, a genius-level intellect, mm-hmm. you know, who, like, who made, a, made a device that can just, like, melt through Beskar armor when she right. was, like, 13 years old or some shit. She, she's already got a lot of qual- like good qualities. She doesn't need to also, oh, yes, and she can use the Force, and she's a Jedi. Fuck off. Yeah, it is stupid, I agree. I'm not That's already like it. a franchise long in the tooth sort of situation where they start combining all the iconography into individuals. It's like, isn't that cool? Doesn't that make you go, ooh? And you're like, not really. Mandalorian is that, by the way. Uh, I, w- I, w- I wonder how long before they fucking give him the Force. Oh, fuck, no. Oh, no. he's, well, he's just got Grogu to do it. Finn's yeah, got the Force true. now, too. Yeah, it's just like they're giving everyone the Force. Mm. 
Well, that's the like thing, right? We'd be that. fine with people having the force if they if there's something behind it, like an earned no, sense no. of. Dude, you know what? It, it was unique that Luke was literally like the only one that could use the force. You know, but now it's like it's getting to the point where it's like everyone has some aspect of the force, and it just kinds of kind of diminishes the level of uh, uniqueness that Luke had. He was like the only one. He was the the he was the new hope. And now it's just, well, okay, Sabine's got the Force. Ahsoka's got the Force. She's still around. Uh, Reva's got the Force. She's now around. Uh, who else we got? Hera and her kid. Hera and her kid. Well, Jason Sindulo, at least his father was a Jedi. No, yeah. Uh, well, it's just establishing how many people we've got. Yeah, how many people we've got now in the Force. Uh, Shin Hattie, Balin Skull. I mean, they're dope. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, though. Like, if they do it in a way that makes you feel something, something worthwhile about it, it doesn't it's quite true. diminish as much. What about Broom Boy? Broom Boy. Yeah, fuck, well, fuck that kid. I'm sure he'll return in Ryan's trilogy. Mm -hmm. Did you see the tweet that was like, "It's thanks to people like this that we'll we'll not get the Ryan trilogy, but we'll instead get some kind of like Grievous film?" And I was just sitting there like, "Fucking yeah, yeah. give me oh, a Grievous film, please." Yeah, give me a Grievous film. Are you kidding me? But like, Jesus. make it good, <laughs> please. Here's my question: The voice actor for Boomerang is Australian, so is he just laying it on a th on thick? Laying it on yeah, this, thick. This came up on uh, when I was streaming it as well. It's like, yeah, when you make fun of like a voice actor, they don't get a get out of jail free card for being from the place. Like, um, I said to them, like, you know, Drinker can do a cringy Scottish accent if he wants to. Like, it's it's not impossible. The same for me with Welsh. It's that uh, they would have told the Australian actor to crank it to like twelve. And then he did. Like him being from Australia doesn't make the accent. I'm not even. There are accents that are authentic that sound like shit, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's like, a, and that one was annoying as hell listening to it throughout the whole uh, game. Same with Harley's. It's like you know, uh, people sound like that. It's like okay, <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. I mean, some English dude there. Neat. Uh, some Irish guy. <laughs> some Irish guy. <laughs> But there's a there's a there's a video out there after that. And me and Drinker just completely blasted. Yeah, I saw it. I saw all the videos, right? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Jeremy showed me. <laughs> Harley is audio torture. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've had way too much exposure to Harley. She needs to be put away for a little while, I think. She, Harley Quinn is the Ahsoka Tano of DC. A little bit, a little yeah. bit. Though at least Ahsoka is not like grating. I guess she can be in a meta sense, but not like her voice. Play the clip of Batman beating Harley in one punch. Oh, that fucking shit was so funny. Actually, yeah, just give me like five minutes and I'll find that for you. Is that in the game? Um, It was in... I think the one they're talking about is in um, Arkham City. Uh, hey, Theory, everyone? I messaged you on Instagram. I hope I wasn't being rude. I'm digging Star... I don't... What are you talking about? Keep up the good work, guys. Also, Ryan is a homo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He ends it, man. Looks real hard. Maybe. I've been super busy lately. But I'd, I'd like to do a stream for a quick hour or something. I love the sabers, but you will have me sold if you make a Qui-Gon. I'm saving up for a nice saber and I want it. Uh, yeah, so I'm making a, I'll make a video update on what's going on with the sabers. We are, well, I'm pouring some fat cash into the websites right now. We're, we're working extremely hard to make like a full store. And I uh, just painted my third room downstairs, which I wasn't really using. I've been like reorganizing everything, painted the walls black. Just actually while we were doing the stream, I paid for the the signs that are going to go up and um, all the stands and everything. It's going to be like the review room. It's going to be cool. So I'll review each and every single one of the sabers and give you guys videos and close in-depth shots and everything that you need to know how to activate them. And uh, of course, if you guys have any issues, reach out to customer care on theorysabers.com or on the Instagram. But I appreciate you guys purchasing and grabbing some sabers. We only have three available right now, but we'll have an entire store soon of empty hilts, legacy hilts, custom hilts, custom builds. It's going to be a really intricate site. So I can highly you. recommend the saber. I bought one. It's real fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about it. Like, surprised <laughs> me with the screenshot. I was playing with it for so long that my arm legit got so fucking tired that I just couldn't anymore. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> are, you sure, are you sure you're talking about a lightsaber? <laughs> hey, man. Well, you know, you know, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was talking about a theory saber and then 
Uh, who knows I got to get doing. me a um I was going to ask you what's like the best one for like a comfort on the hand if you have okay. like, an opinion on that. Okay. Yeah, so when we have the full site I'll have like a whole array for you, but there's uh there's one that I just took off the site right now cuz we're only limited to 3 at a time. It's called the Ritualist and that one and it's it's quite cheap. It's under 200 bucks and um I'll put that one up probably in the next few days again. I just had like a sale for the previous one. That one's really good for Mm -hmm. I want, I want Dooku and... still. I'm after that one. Yeah, so we're. I've been testing all all of them. I'm testing a ton of them. And, so uh, cool. Say, it's beautiful, dude. The craftsmanship is really, really nice. So very excited. So, very context excited. here is uh, this is Arkham City. Highly recommend playing this game. It's fun as fuck. You're Batman just trying to save the city from Joker and other villains taking over. You're entering, I think this is a church, and you know Harley is here. And uh, this, this, let's just c contrast this with how they treat Harley these days. You don't need organs, man. Uh oh. Let the lady go, Ow! Which game was that from? Arkham. Arkham Knight? City, yeah. Arkham City. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor, poor Harley. Uh, but yeah, Lucas, coming soon, man. Stay fresh, boys. What's up, Sand? The cut out the scene where Harley Quinn ingested Bane's steroids and beat Batman with a golf. Oh, dude. Get... <laughs> what are they going to do with the season two of that? Of Lost it's Lost. crashing and burning, man. They already know that they're going to have to, uh, you know, they're going to have to see layoffs, like shrinkage on basically everything to do with the game. Releasing additional seasons, people are just going to make fun of it. Like this is insane. The games as a service thing needs to absolutely be killed. It's it's insane and annoying. Um, and Suicide Squad is one of the worst for it because I don't even know how much we've you you know about theory, but like three separate times when I was playing the game, it just said you've been disconnected from the server, so you can't play campaign anymore. Right. You would send me back to the menu, and I'd just be sitting there waiting until it goes. You're back up with the server. I was on stream, so my internet was fine. It's just like, well, nice. Dude. Can, can you imagine playing a fucking campaign? And they just tell you like you're not allowed to play. No. Oh, sorry. And uh, yeah, this always online. You can't own the game. Shit, like I don't like that. Man. I don't. Yeah, no, no, I hate like, it. Buy the game. It's mine. So. Skeleton Scarsguard said recently that Andor season two is less than six months away from being completely finished. Do you think it's possible we get it in twenty four? It it would be possible, but we're not going to. That's not what their plan is. I feel like they. What have do you think their plan away, is? Right? So twenty twenty five. Acolyte in the summer. Mm hmm. We're getting uh, Bad Batch in a week, uh, 10 days. We're getting, whatchamacallit, what's... Uh, Tales, Tales of the Jedi, of the Jedi and Jedi Skeleton Crew are the other ones, so those would be thrown in there somewhere. Yeah, it feels like it'd be weird to shove Andor in this year instead of just moving it to the next one. It was mm -hmm. supposed to be this year. Well, I mean, at, at this point. Like, they, they, they've already said that Andor's coming out in 2025. I don't think there's really any reason for them to push it up this year because... What is coming out on its heels? Nothing else is like in production or anything like that. So you might as well just spread it out in 2025 because at this point in time, I don't know what we're going to have in 2025 Star Wars wise. I don't. I think we'll have Andor season two and we'll mm -hmm. have. Uh... Jeez, is that it in 25? <laughs> that's the only thing that's like actually happening now. Ahsoka season two just got green okay. lights, right? Okay. Um, man, what's going on with Mando season four? I don't know. When they start production on Mandalorian stuff, is it going to be for season four or is it going to be for this movie that they're doing? Like, it, there, there's not a whole lot of clarity when it comes to some of that stuff. The well, Lando, man. the Lando thing is still supposed to be happening. No one wants um, that, dude. Nobody wants. Donald Glover Lando really show. wants it. Well, of course he does. I would, I would too, if I was Donald Glover. But it just doesn't like. Why not getting I, why, why not a solo season two or a, a solo so we can continue with Kira and Maul? That's all I, I care about. <laughs> I don't know if they're they probably not allowed to touch that because of the movie flopping. I the thing is, if if you would ask me in isolation, would I like a Lando series that's kind of like the young Indiana Jones series where you have like an old Lando, an old Billy D. Williams who's just sitting in a bar and he's like. Let me tell you something, kid. The old days, they were something else. And then, like, he like he like introduces something, and it then he's like remembering back, and it's just Donald Glover going through this like crazy adventure that he'd talked about. That, that, 
the idea of that, the concept of that is cool as shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be down for that, but I don't, I don't trust any of it happening. It'll just be what robot am I fucking this week? I I don't, I don't know if I'm down. I don't think it's going to be that. I don't think they'll do that. I don't think it's, I don't think they'll do that. But I mean, I don't know, dude. What, like, well, you know, Lando did have an adventure with Luke, right? In that new book. So, hey, maybe. Maybe it could be something good. Are you talking about the Darth Uchi thing? No, uh, the Shadows of this, what's it called? The new book that just came out with Luke where he, uh, where Anakin comes and saves him from like the shadow beings or something with lightsabers. Uh-huh. What's it called, chat? Uh, shadows of the Sith. Shadows of the Sith, yeah. I just guessed. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> fuck, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's Shadows of something. Sounds right, yeah. The Shadows of Sithendom. <sighs> Shadow of the Empire. No, mm. I wish. Um, Dash Rendar. Did you ever play that back in the day, Mauler? Of course. Oh. I, I, I think I know you played it. What about you, Maul? You play uh, Shadows of the Empire? I don't think so, no. I, the Star Wars games I played, I felt like I played a whole bunch when I was younger, but then I realized there's like way more, you know? There's so many. Um, the Some of my favorites are like the late 90s, early 2000s. The Shadows of the Empire obviously came out. Rogue Squadron, that was awesome when it came out. Um, but the flight simulators on the PC were X-Wing, TIE Fighter, uh, X-Wing vs. TIE, X-Wing Alliance. Those were awesome i used to spend literally hours sitting there with a freaking um like i made my mom buy me a joystick just to play that game Mm -hmm. um god it was so fun yeah those were good times man the games are just better back then what so did you hear about the whole 1.5 billion that disney's now spending on (laughs) i don't really understand it it's a star wars marvel disney parks yeah they realize that games are a thing yeah well games make the most money of anything really so I mean, I what does this say? Do you know like, much about it? <laughs> Other than the fact that it's happening, I mean, just what I don't know what, what else is there it? is. To, oh well, uh, the the investing in making games—that's all I know. Oh, it's supposed to be some sort of like a Fortnite thing. Yep. Yeah. So, all right, you're talking about the Disney thing they announced with Epic, right? Or uh, sorry, with with, with, with yeah, Fortnite. So, so they um yeah with Epic Games, they basically bought into. Epic Games, uh, $1.5 billion yeah. for like a share. And it includes a big partnership with all of their different franchises, not okay. just Star Wars, but Marvel, like Pixar, like a bunch of stuff to have like little events and things like that. I don't know the grand scheme of exactly what it's going to look like, but they have a big long term partnership with Fortnite through Epic for who knows how long. So, what I think, like what I gathered from what I was reading, is essentially it's going to be. You know, uh, kind of like Disney World, where you have like trains that you can transport from one land to the next. There is a full on gonna like Star Wars land in Fortnite animation, but it's all Star Wars. Like you can have AT ATs. You can like from what I saw, full on like Empire at War meets Call of Duty Star Wars, and then you can like traverse to the Marvel land, and it's gonna be the same thing, basically like the fight at Wakanda, and then it's gonna be uh, like a Disney Parks thing where you can like go there and you can like go around and hang out with your friends or do different... I, I didn't really mm. fully understand. You can go to Stark Tower, Stark Industries, stuff like that. So it seems like a full-on like immersive sort of experience where you can go to these different worlds and play in different uh, environments, in different IPs. They can have an event where they tell you that somehow the Emperor returned. Ooh. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be unique through Fortnite. Who would do that? Yeah, that'd be stupid. Who um, do you think paid for that one? Fortnite or Disney? Disney. Disney, yeah, have an event like that? Yeah. No, because that would bring people to Fortnite. I'd imagine well, Fortnite would pay Disney for that. Maybe, uh, like, so obviously, well, no, wait, for, because I, the emperor, the, the whole point of that announcement is to get people to watch Star Wars. Yeah, like that's an ad. Like that's an ad that Disney it, wanted. For like sure. that's, that that event is an ad for Disney. Now, I'm sure that throughout the course of the last however long. I'm sure that they have gotten paid very handsomely for the rights to use a lot of these characters. Oh my God. Yeah. The same thing goes across like all the different franchises that they pull from like hundred percent. When it comes to that specific event, I would imagine that Disney are the ones that are like making that happen. 
because it is a big advertisement. Yeah. Not very effective, I don't think, but uh, no. it was a big advertisement. My two questions about the Disney deal are, my one one question is, can I shoot Mickey Mouse in the head in Fortnite? Mm-hmm. My second question is, can I use Mickey Mouse to shoot other people in the head? It's really all I care about with this big deal. Probably. Makes sense. Probably. Just go to Magic Kingdom and start start shooting. Kind of crazy. In the game. Obviously in the game. We're talking about Fortnite. Well, you never know. Someone's gonna Yeah, in Fortnite, in Minecraft. I, I would never actually go to Magic Kingdom for real. Yeah, obviously, but you know these fucking weirdos, man. They're going to clip that. It's <laughs> stupid as shit. Oh, man. Oh. They just get clipped again? Oh, no. Losers. Uh... Anyways. Baller's always involved in these clips somehow. Just sitting there. Yeah, I'm just here. Because he's out. everywhere. I am. I infect the whole internet. <laughs> Baller just wants to talk about riding and somebody goes off on some random tangent. And he gets <laughs> he ends up in the clip and gets slandered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, dude? Like, just <laughs> fuck me, right? God damn it. I'm used to it. This point is fine. When you had a private talk with Hayden, did he mention that he and Natalie are an item again? And can Padme reunited? Starting rumors. <laughs> no. <laughs> Darth Race, are you the one that super chatted me about that as well? I think he just wants it to happen. He's trying to speak it into existence. Ah, got Aww. it. Okay. Manifesting. Hey, chat, we got 3,000 people in the room. If we can get 3,000 likes, that'd be dope. Uh, we're about 1,000 likes right now, so um, we'd appreciate it. It really helps the algo. Can you react to Star Wars fan animations, Shadows of the Empire fan film trailer? Sure. Um... Ryan, do you think you could bring that out? Is that a new trailer or something like that? Let's see how long it is. Shadows of the Empire. By the way, you guys, and revolving uh, regarding super chats, uh, we are now splitting them. So all your money will go to each of us. Yeah. So if you hate me, don't super chat because I get a portion of it. All right. Yeah. God. Yeah. I'm we not going to make that statement. <laughs> yeah. So. So uh, we're officially, <laughs> yeah. We would have got more if you just never said that theory. Nah, they all love us. Everyone loves us here. Well, I'm sure there's probably like a hundred people that are just looking for clips and trying to be opportunistic in that sense. Um, all right, I've got it. It's two minutes long. Hopefully it doesn't use any copyrighted music. But uh, we can react to this here. Boom, boom. Going through... Mahler's Ragnarok video right now. Love that you guys point out every tiny detail and things I didn't notice while playing it. Theory, if you have a good 20 hours to spare, I recommend checking it out. Well, Wait, God of War? Just, yeah, play the game. Fuck yeah. I think you'd like... You, you, didn't you say you played, you played it already, right? Dude, I played it when it came yeah. out. I, I finished it. Yeah. What do you think of it? That was amazing. Give me more. What do you think about it? Come on. I, liked God, I like God of War 4 more. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like too much about how uh, we would segue off into like Atreus. Like, I know what they're trying to do. They're basically going to make an Atreus game most likely now where he's like a little bit older. And fine, you know, cool. But I came for Kratos and the dynamic with Kratos and Atreus is what I enjoyed. But to be honest, I rather the very end where Kratos and Mimir are together. I think that is the way to go forwards. Dude, Especially I, I with don't the, even... the DLC. They've done so well with the dynamic between Mimir and Kratos that, like, if they said, like, oh, new new God of War game, no Mimir, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You keep Mimir no matter what now. No, <laughs> He's... amazing. Yeah, the I'm two like... of them together. There was one thing that struck me. I don't know if you caught it, but, like, when you first play Ragnarok, he refers to him by his name instead of head, like, as he does throughout all of the 2018 game. <laughs> it's uh, it's just cool. And then when you get Helios in Dude. Valhalla, he, he calls yeah. him head, like, Silence head sort of thing. It's like, yeah. hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I I re I haven't beat the um the DLC or whatever. So wow, loser. I, I, know, I, mean, I will, but no, my favorite game of all time, God of War four. Oh, that's cool, man. I yeah. uh, I love it. I prefer Ragnarok. Uh, it's for the payoffs. I absolutely adore what they do with Kratos in that game. Yeah, Ragnarok definitely comes right after it. I would say yeah. <laughs> it's weird. G O W are my favorite games: God of War and Gears of War. Oh, mm -hmm. really? Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, Ocarina of Time, but that's old. I hope they remaster it. 
That would be like a, such a Nintendo thing to do to not advertise it and just drop it in a random Nintendo Direct. They're like, hey, yeah. seven days from now, we're releasing uh, Ocarina of Time Remastered. <laughs> make Sports Wars great again. Stop trying to make boring Beardo happen. He's not going to happen. Hey, I made a Sports Damn. Wars video today. Thank you. I, I beat Coco. Big super chat from Good Wrench. Thank you so much, Good Wrench, for the sixty-six bucks. Execute order sixty-six with cheese and a small raspberry shake. That's an interesting combination. Mm-hmm. Cheese and a small raspberry cheese shake. Cheese and a small raspberry shake. Hey man, don't knock it till you try it. All right. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for the uh, suggestion, bro. <laughs> Downside of New God of War: No GTA Wade. I don't get it. Well, I, which way do they? It's all about the waves from fucking Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all because I'm not as familiar with GTA. So if there's a GTA wave, no, I'm not. I, unless I'm forgetting. Was interested in the acolyte until Leslie Headland stuff, and then I heard the actor say there's really no good or evil in Star Wars. It tracks perfectly for modern Disney storytelling. I'm tired of this. Uh, no, I think the one that tracked for me was when she's like, "Yes, I'm a powerful female character. Star Wars is more of a patriarchy." That for me, I was like, hmm. okay, well, I see where perhaps the show is headed. So let's just maybe focus on a good story. We could be nice. Just All right, here we go. Gender thing. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire animated fan film. He is a dangerous man, my master, not to be trusted. Do not trouble yourself with she's or Vader. He is my concern. Yes, my master. No Jabba. I expect a bonus. The music is freaking wild. Like it's uh it's it, like they're just hitting everything hard right there. Some of the some of it looks decent though. I am surprised. Yeah. I told you Princess Leia hired the right guy. I think we've got Slave One spotted. It's at an Imperial moon base on Gaul. I hope you've got something interesting cooked up for us. Oh no! Cool. Cool, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I watched that. I love that. Yeah, so Shadows of the Empire was when it came out 95, 96, somewhere in that time frame. And it was like a multimedia project. It was a video games. It was, you know, novelization. It was, you know, comic stuff. Like they, they put out a lot of stuff surrounding it all at the same time. And uh takes place in between Empire and Return of the Jedi. Um, Han's frozen in carbonite still. You've got kind of Dash Rendar who acts as a kind of scoundrel smuggler, kind of Han Solo like stand in character and the outrider it's cool yeah I, I really enjoyed that game when i played it the gameplay like many n64 games doesn't hold up super great nowadays but... no but i mean still enjoyable those freaking tentacle things man those drove me insane the uh when you go in the water and it's like the sarlacc tentacles oh my yeah. god those drove me nuts i had to use homing missiles on them i remember <laughs> Instead of trying to like shoot them a million times. Yeah. What do you lads think of the Disney earnings call and all the news around Epic Moana 2? I've heard people say it helped and hurt Disney. Your opinion. I don't know anything about the earnings call. Do you guys? Yeah. So they, to me, obviously the stock to, uh, stock bumped up after it. Um, they lost another 1.3 million subscribers on Disney Plus, but they committed to paying a bunch of other people for other content, whether that's Epic, whether that's uh, getting the streaming rights to Taylor Swift's concert, or whether that's uh, shifting what was going to be like a Disney Plus thing and making it a release into a movie with Moana 2. Um, they basically admitted that we can't do anything original anymore, so we're just going to focus on sequels to things we already have. Mm. Um, that are already successful and we're going to acquire things that other people have made because we can't make original shit. So it kind of depends on your perspective. Obviously, some investors thought it was good news afterwards, but uh, long term, 
we'll, we'll see what they can do to turn it around. Cause that like, you have to start creating other things yourself. You like they to. got in this position because they just continue to buy things that were already successful and then they destroyed them. Yeah. So literally they thought like, oh, okay, you know, it's, it's a home run. We're going to just make more of whatever's already successful. And we just buy it. It's like, it doesn't work like that. Anyways, they'll learn, they'll learn with their pockets. Um, I got a proposition for Disney. If you guys want, make Vader episode two exclusive on Disney Plus and three. Mm. You know it's going to hit big numbers, Disney. You'll probably get millions and millions of subs. Just what do you want in exchange? Money. How much? Uh, we can talk about that, but um. No, you know what? What I'd want in exchange is an interview with George Lucas. Disney can't make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'd be better can. off going to somewhere else other than Disney. I'm sure they. Okay, can. out of curiosity, what if you if you got to ask him one question, you got one thorough answer? Would you do it for that? Uh, no. What about two? <laughs> no, no. I want to sit down and hang out with him. I'd fly out, speak with him for maybe like I don't know. An hour. That's it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And maybe some money. That'd be good. I'd want to go to a mall food court and eat lunch with them. At least oh, pay so for the cool. film. They could pay for the film. I'd be happy with that. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Just go to some random food court and no one knows. And we yeah, would, the, uh, the, the picture the picture of him at that Australian food court. It's hilarious. Be awesome. Yeah. In, it's not it's not quite as good as him popping up in the middle of that documentary. No. So pretty good. But almost as good. Yeah. Could you imagine you just go to your random food court and you're like, fuck, that's George Lucas. <laughs> and, and you're like right next to him. He's like, what do you think of the sequel trilogy? He's like, oh, shit. You're like, yeah. Anyway. Bye, bye dude. <laughs> See you around. Hey, Brandon. Thanks for being a member, bro. Next Megacon, can we roast marshmallows and lift, please? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, the second part to the vlog is coming probably in a few days. Wait, wait, wait. Weren't you cool? And even so far as make excuses for why Sabine having the force, now you have a problem with it. It was never good with that decision, but still respectfully. Uh, I always had a problem with it, but part of the channel is explaining things and why they make certain decisions. But I'm not necessarily cool with the amount of force that she used. And you can go back to the videos about me talking about it where I explain that and express that. But her using the force, I mean, yeah, look, everyone's able to use the force is what George said, but there is a limit. So her using the force to that extent, no, I was never okay with that. If you want, you can go back and watch. Hey, Theory Mahler and Ryan, FYI Theory, you really got to check out the Fears to Fathom episodic horror game series. Never heard of that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. What the? Did any of you watch Reacher? I watched I a few episodes. I, I, I did have watch not. But uh, a bunch of people have recommended season one. People seem less recommended with season two, but it's still good, right? I think it's still good. It's a step, a little bit of a step down, but it's also very different. Um, the book itself is very different. Season one is very isolated into a small town um, and like solving a mystery in that town. Whereas the other one, there's a lot more people involved, but that's how the book is as well. It's a lot more different cities they go to and everything. And I'm going to get it back to the season one type of template uh, for season three. But season one is, listen, it's not like revolutionary or anything. It's kind of just getting back to basic storytelling. Uh, but it's it, to me, it's well done. And it's uh, a character. They're not afraid to just be like toxic masculinity with Jack Reacher. So it's good. Yeah, he's a cool character. Mahler, sorry you played Suicide Squad. Rocksteady mm -hmm. should be ashamed they said it in the Arkhamverse. Also, your fave Batman, the animated series episode. Um, I haven't watched it. Well, like I've seen episodes here and there, but I haven't really gone through it. Uh, my big intro to Batman like lore has been through the movies and the games. It wasn't it wasn't through the comics or through the animated series, but he um, still has to watch uh Clone, Clone Wars. Wars. Yeah. As long as we set that homework in stone, all right? Like then two months ago. Well, we're we doing it. Neither of us have done it. I was gonna say we we we'll have to get Ryan in now as well, right? He's gonna have to rewatch along with us. Two Look years. at him with this little, little like I don't need to do that. I know it back to front. 
the two I mean, Clone Wars, Gendy, Gendy, Gendy. Yeah, I mean, it would it would be good to, for a refresh for sure. What breaks canon worse, surviving lightsabers or the Holdo maneuver? Holdo maneuver. Sorry. No, I would say light, light surviving lightsabers. Are you kidding I, me? No, no. I well, think you're looking that, at Maul. He, he had the dark side. You well, tell me, Reva getting stabbed, fucking twice, once as a kid, isn't worse than the Holdo maneuver? Holdo maneuver talking, destroys no, all the Star Wars. Yeah, we're talking about levels, right? It is still really stupid for so many people to constantly survive like the same type of like lightsaber shit. However, if you're telling me that you know all the Rebel Alliance needed to do to stop the Death Star was maybe just send yeah. one guy in a suicide run and go to hyperspace and blow it up like that's a whole different level of fucked up from a canon perspective yeah that's true well they're both fucked up they Seems are like yeah these two oh yeah making lightsaber shit or making it so the space battles never made any sense it's like thanks like, yeah, <laughs> cool thanks making qui-gon's death the death star run are both so important are the lore keepers mia yeah you know what that raises a good question they could have just done hyperspace into the literal death star and something you've got to understand about the quote-unquote law keepers is that they'll tell you, the ones who work for Disney and then the ones who you find on Twitter, they're like, wow, you're so stupid you don't understand that the Holdo maneuver actually matches law completely. You're so stupid you don't understand that everything Luke did actually matches his character perfectly. And you're sitting there like, oh shit, <laughs> this is even worse than incompetence. Yeah, it's, uh, there's something special, those guys. I would still love an actual remaster of Shadows of the Empire done in UE5, Unreal Engine 5, on the scale of what they did with Final Fantasy 2. They could remaster all the games. I'd love that. You know what's so fucked is that um, they had been doing that KOTOR remaster in the Unreal Engine for forever. Yeah. And Disney shut it down only to announce that they're going to do their own KOTOR remake and then it's just dead in the water. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, it's also insane. One of the things that came out of the Disney earnings call was Bob Iger saying, you know, as I looked at the landscape, I looked at looked at the zoomers and the young kids and they seem to be playing a lot of video games and i thought we really need to get into video games it's like one congrats what? on being a deck congrats <laughs> on being a decade late to that and two man it's almost like there was an entire video game developer attached to lucasfilm when you bought it called lucas arts that you decided to shut down when you yeah, bought well. it and shut down every project that was associated with it instead farm out your games to places like EA for a decade. Is there an article on this? I'd love to rip into it. Um, let me see. Bob Iger said this. Bob, yeah, I, like I'm obviously being a little bit hyperbolic, but that's basically what he said. Is I noticed that the young kids are really getting into video games. That's why we wanted to partner with Fortnite. Mm. Yeah, let's just shut down freaking Lucas Arts. Cool. Sounds Bob good, Iger. Bob. <laughs> Bro, this headline: Bob Iger quote stunned by popularity of gaming. Ugh. What a fucking idiot. God damn. Um, so here, this is just uh, the first article that popped up. I'm sure there's something better, but um, Bob Iger stunned by popularity of video games. The media giant recently announced that it's teaming up with Epic Games to allow consumers to interact with stories and characters from Disney-related brands such as Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars. Iger, 72, just so you know he's old, Jesus. Uh, said during the investor call, <laughs> In terms of their total media screen time on video games, it was stunning to me, equal to what they spend on TVs and movies. Or sorry, what? the amount of screen time on video games, it was stunning to me, equal to what they spend on TV and movies. And the conclusion I reached was we have to be there. And we have to be there as soon as we possibly can be in a really compelling way. Oh my God, dude. Dude, this would have been kind of boomerish even 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah. It would have been yeah, like, yeah, um, literally. yeah. <laughs> Go back to 2010, this would have been like, what? Hmm. Stupid. Yeah. Um, ah, cool, it's a man. little, what, little hey. bit late to get into it, I suppose. But uh, but yeah, it, it is just very ironic that they decided to shut down LucasArts the way that they did. And Star Wars games have just been an absolute pit of despair since then. Mm, they've been shit. You know, with, with a couple, obviously I know a lot of people like, you know, Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. That was the um, gleaming, yeah, that was great, but. That's all you're going to give us? I mean, you literally could have done Force Unleashed uh, 3. You could have done Battlefront 3. You could have done all these. You know, remaster all the KOTOR games. Remaster uh, freaking Republic Commando, Bounty Hunter. There's, uh, there's... The, the thing was, back in the early 2000s and stuff like that, and even really before, they, they saw 
what was working with other places. They saw what, you know, different genres or types of games, whether it was strategy, whether it was flight simulators, whether it was first person shooters. Okay. It, they took that and they're like, hey, let's find a way to do this, but in a Star Wars setting. And they shit out a lot of games. Not all of them were great. Some of them were crappy, but a lot of them ended up being bangers. They were really good uh, because they weren't afraid to just go out there and make a lot of different things. Um, obviously, game development is different now than it was back then. Um, for instance, after the success of Knights of the Old Republic, they fast track KOTOR 2. And I think that game was made in like eight or nine months or something insane like that. Um, obviously they got a lot of the, the files and everything that they were able to replicate from KOTOR 1 and made it a little bit easier, but that's why that game was kind of a buggy mess. That's why yeah. they cut so much content, but things are just so much different now game development wise, but still the principle being they put out so many different things. And that's why we have all these great star Wars games to look back on that came out in like some of them in the same year. Yeah. You just don't have that anymore. Yeah. No. Uh, hey, Bob, thanks for shutting down LucasArts, dude. It's awesome. And then now they created what Lucas Games, Lucasfilm Games or something, yeah, right? Which yeah. is basically a partnership to like work with the people that they're doing mm. games with, like that Indiana Jones one, I think. <laughs> Which, like I said, when I saw people reacted, I was like, "It's not going to be good." No, just to put plainly how strange an experience Fortnite is for Mahler, I was a clone trooper teaming with Goku and John Cena, killing NPC Kick Peter. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know. Fortnite's just the franchise sort of... I called it a franchise swamp in one of our catch-ups recently. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. Franchise blender. Thanks for the memberships, guys. Thank you, Good Wrench. Downside a new God of War, no GTA Wade. Read that one. Thank you, Rossi. Did you guys watch Deadpool trailer? I did. Yeah. What did you think about it, guys? Uh... It's dead, it's Deadpool. It's uh, the first time in a long time in the MCU that I laughed, mm-hmm. and it was a trailer. So At the that. pegging comment, yeah. Um, and it's you know, Ryan Reynolds can make me laugh, um, which is something. You <laughs> you you, you soiled yourself while you were unconscious. I wasn't unconscious. Oh <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some that I can expect myself to enjoy some of it, but fucking, I'll see the TVA in there. It's like, good god, how'd you yeah, guys so get into a movie? On? What's going on with that? So now they're they're going did, back. Did you, watch, and then just... did you watch Loki? The first one. Okay. First season. So now they're... And I heard Josh Brolin say that Thanos is coming back. He did say that he's heard... He's just waiting for the call. That he he's heard whispers that they're going to bring Thanos back for something. I'd be down for that. Uh, what... <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> he was he did all of this just to come back to me. He was dope. He was dope. Fucking, I mean, well, the, would the you one... feel the same way if they were like Palpatine's coming back again, bro? No. It's going to be great. No, that's stupid. Well, because great. in Endgame, he wasn't really, that wasn't the real Thanos. It was just like some younger version. That he got a Cliff timeline. Notes version of his life. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, I, I don't disagree. I just don't know what like. Why like would bring him remake. back? Yeah. Why would bring him back? You, you want a remake of game? Endgame? Is what you want then? Because it was more entertaining than anything they're doing now. I... He was he was a much more entertaining villain than Kang. Yeah. Why don't we make Kang good? Why don't we have someone else? They that's great? Why do you think they make new Thanos again good? Yeah, if it's the same people involved, why do you think just bringing back a CGI Josh Brolin changes anything? <laughs> I can be hopeful, you guys. Why can't we be hopeful for fucking Doctor Doom or a Galactus or it's whatever? Because the fuck. they're not going to do that, obviously. I like well, the way you, you said Doctor Doom. What do you mean? They've already said they're looking for Doctor Doom casting. <clears throat> Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I didn't. Doctor Doom. Doom. Doctor Doom. That Fantastic Four movies, like the cast has been finalized for like months and they so oh. they can't I, I don't know if they can't find it like i don't know if they're done rewriting it yet or whatever but they still haven't announced it isn't pedro pascal uh reed yeah yeah fantastic the guys and everything now he is yeah you can probably get him for cheap now well on that note guys like spike in three two one everyone hit the like button in three Ryan, did you hit like? Um, yeah, you can hit like. Mine, yeah, mine. I still have it open from when the stream first started. It says six likes. I think nice. that's out of date. That's awesome. 
That's They're refresh where it. We want. It's exactly where we want to be. It's great. Oh, now nah, there's seven now. Oh, cool. You think Star Wars will bring back Barriss Afi? I wonder what happened to her. <clears throat> um, she turned into a terrorist. Uh, they destroyed her character, yeah. That's kind of a funny name, by the way. Barriss Afi. They probably will, dude, because she was like the number one antagonist to Ahsoka. Yeah, they, they took... So Barris had a, a a much different story, kind of in continuity before uh, TCW, and they they turned her into a fucking terrorist. So if you like that character before, get fucked. Disney can make money easily. Upload old animated TV shows, Emperor's New School, Tarzan TV Show, and Hercules Cartoon. Air them weekly. I don't know what that means. Simon Rue. C U Mahler Ryan usually at most both you theory hi what the fuck? that was a decent attempt it's Cumbria and Beef is uh, Welsh but you know what oh I appreciate <laughs> yes that? I let you go that far I just you literally wanted just to. watched him <laughs> struggle <laughs> yeah. for like two minutes and chat will thank me for it. All right, great. Oh, well, let's clip it. Theory, you turned on members only chat, but yes, I did because there was some spamming beans. I understand the take that Andor was well made and well acted, but do you guys think it added enough to lore to justify its existence? Uh, I don't think Voice. something needs to add to lore. I, I guess I, I didn't want to like ask a clarifying question on what add to lore means. Um, I kind of just despise the character of Cass and Andor. I, I don't, I'm not invested in the character. That's despise the hardest thing him? about. Yeah, I, I, I'm not interested in him. I shouldn't say I hate him, but I, I'm not interested in him. There's like nothing there for me. I don't know if it's because of Diego Luna. I don't know if it's because we already saw him in Rogue One, and I just don't think there's too much to him. But I, I just don't like that character. Um. So, I, but I don't know about the question about adding lore. Um, like grand events of the overall story of Star Wars or something, I guess, or just changes to things that are interesting. I don't know. It, it's pretty contained and or, and we know what it's leading to, right? Like in terms of big events, it's technically leading to the destruction of the Death Star, but mm -hmm. we've already got that. So what we're getting is stuff that's going to be tied off. It's like, how interesting is, um, you know, Stellan Skarsgård's character? It's like, well, he's probably going to die in season two. And it's in, like, well, yeah, you know, that's, that doesn't mean to imply this. It won't be interesting. It probably will. It's just that um, we're not going to be creating or adding necessarily anything that's going to be of a surprise to the universe. I don't think, but it's not something I need in Star Wars. I just want good stories. And part of, I think, part of my the reason I don't like the character is because Rogue One is a story that was stolen from old Star Wars. Um, Kyle Katarn and Jan Ors, all of a sudden they change the gender roles. You have Jin Urso instead of Jan Ors, and you have basically a ripoff Kyle Katarn and Cassian Andor. They even look the same, you know, and they're having the same role in terms of stealing the Death Star plans, shit like this. So to me, I would just scoffed at that. I thought it was so stupid. So I've kind of hated the character um, since Rogue One. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not interested in seeing any more. Well, see, that makes a lot more sense now because most people don't feel anything for Andor. A lot of people like him from Andor, but then you, you know, you, like I said, you went with disdain first, which is pretty strong. Yeah. It's like, now that I know all that. I'm like, oh, that's why I say. Yeah. It it's, just, it's just like the same shit, right? It's like um, they know only a handful of people did it. So they throw this thing away. They say, we want creative freedom. So we're going to get rid of all these freaking stories that were in continuity before. And uh, we're going to, so we can have creative freedom and do our own thing. And then you literally just rip that stuff off. You gender swap the roles. Um, and you pretend like you're a creative. I absolutely would prefer if they had uh, adapted with respect, right? But like, there's a couple of things that exist in our world that we have a lot of respect for that are taken from things without uh, taking them. You know, like The Shining, for example. Mm -hmm. It's like there, there's stuff that exists that uh, Haunted of Hill House is one of the big examples. He he didn't really take he didn't respect that book at all to uh to the point where the fan reviews of it are pretty angry, but the most people who watch the show are like, yeah, it's pretty cool. I was like, well, you know. And, and, I, and, and that's why I think that you have to keep your opinion in perspective. Like, 
I very much understand that I'm in the minority of Star Wars fans in terms of people that read a lot of these books, you know, that cares about all these things. I get that, right? So the, I, I understand that my opinion is going to be shaped by that and that a lot of people might not understand why I feel the way that I do. Um, I get it. That, that I, makes um, sense. All I guess I want to push on is that um, it's, it's funny that we have these questions about Andor because to me it feels like it is one of the few worthwhile things Disney did. And so we're trying to figure it out because why didn't it sort of work? And it's like, you know, did it add enough lore or did it ha do enough things that were interesting to do this, to do that? And, and your perspective that it like it pilfered no less than a lot of other things that they've done. The difference to me seems to be that they managed to not completely fuck it up after stealing it from something. How do, you like feel about, how, how do you feel about Rogue One when it came out? Uh, it was 50 50. I like I liked a couple of things in it. Funnily enough, I argued with Az like four years ago in defense of Vader in that film because he said he was like cheap, key jangly crap that wasn't actual Vader. I think Vader's awesome in that film. Like, um, I think they nailed him for the few scenes they had of him. I think it's awesome, but I think it's tough to justify seeing him 45 minutes later in the duel with Ben after what we just witnessed. I understand that. Yeah. I, um, because that's the thing, right? It's not being. I'm not watching it that way. I'm not even thinking about that. I'm also just watching it as like a an additional Star Wars movie. But to watch them as a first time Star Wars viewer like that, I think will actually kind of make a New Hope feel weird. It yes, hundred percent. Now I do think that of the times that we've seen Vader, that he was actually felt like a threat and like a badass and stuff like that which is different than the way he's been portrayed in you know some other media yeah 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 that's kind of what i'm getting at in rogue right. one it felt like that film was afraid of him which is but, i'm cool with but i one of the most frustrating things for me was about that is as he's sitting there you know slamming this dude up and down like doing all this stuff bro just force grab the didn't we talk plans. about this that we he didn't know he, he he wasn't he didn't know that's what was happening back there he was just focusing on killing everybody Okay, no, he was obviously like hunting down. That. He knew. He yes. was fucking, what do you mean? He's shredding through people. He doesn't know like exactly what everyone's doing on the ship at all times. He's, he's no, dealing. He's just he deflecting fucking blasters. Hey, that guy's running away. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. They're all there he, to kill him. He didn't. My theory is that he didn't on purpose. Is because he doesn't want. He never liked the Death Star. Right? He never liked that something was more powerful than the Force. I don't he know about it, that. Why? Why would you hope? Why was he stopping the uh, the trench so crews then? Yeah, stop the. He wasn't. Corvette. He, he was literally just, was. He was, what do you mean? He was. Yeah, but he was pretending. He could have easily just like, <laughs> right? But he was just pretending like he was going through them and having some fun, so he could tell the emperor, like, "Oh yeah, I tried. I got away." I'm. I've never heard this before. Like, what? What it's are you talking theory. about? <laughs> it's a Star Wars theory. It's a. It's a Star Wars stretch. Well, he doesn't like the Death Star, right? So why would he want the plans to be retrieved so that the rebel well, wait, 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 wait. can't destroy it? Well, when you say he doesn't like the Death Star, are we yeah. going from that one quote about your technological terror? Yeah. It's not like, yeah, but it's, that line is about respecting the power of the Force. It's not about how he, he hates technology or the Death Star or anything. Yeah, but it was in comparison to the Death Star because they were like, your ancient religion, blah, blah, blah. Like, and he was like, don't be so sure about this technological terror that you've constructed next to the power of the Force. So he was, they was comparing it. They were basically like scoffing at the Force and then they were yeah. putting this Death Star on a pedestal. Well, like writing wise, that sets up or foreshadows rather Luke being able to destroy the Death Star with the Force, right? But Vader was trying to stop him actively. He stopped everybody who was going in there. Yeah, because he didn't want the entire Death Star to be destroyed when it came down to it. He's like, well, I'm the only one that has to kind of jump in here and make it not happen. Make you it are explode. confusing the hell out of me right now. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> it's like... if, if he really didn't want it destroyed, then he would have done his best to stop those plans from getting out. I don't I think he wanted it to be destroyed in the beginning. He changed his mind. Well, I don't think he changed his mind. I think he was just going with the flow. I like that we have three different perspectives here because my take is that he didn't know that's exactly where the plans were. He was just killing people. Well, because oh, the, at that point, the my Death take Star is wasn't... it's just a cool fucking scene that they didn't think about. Why didn't he just fucking force grab this bitch and yank him well, back? Well, well, no, I think at that point, the Death Star hadn't been established as well as it was in perhaps later on A New Hope 
where the whole galaxy started to realize that this thing can destroy planets and so that Vader wasn't as imposing anymore because it's like, well, who cares about Darth Vader? He's just going to blow up our planet. So he's not I, as important anymore. He's not as scary. I, I would not make the argument in terms of he's not as scary. I would make the argument, if I was going to make the argument, I would make the argument in terms of his, the, his pecking order in terms of how important Tarkin is versus him to the Emperor. Like that that's what I would make an argument for if I was gonna go well, your route. Well, yeah. Which I don't agree with, but it's, it wouldn't it's just all, be about him being scary to people or whatever. No, it's all about his level of importance to the Emperor. Yeah. So I mean, like right now it's basically the Emperor, Tarkin, Vader. And Vader hates Tarkin in that sense because he's like, Well, why is Tarkin more in command than I am? And then now you have the Death Star, which is like even more powerful than the Emperor in a sense, where it's like no one really I, fears the Emperor or Vader that much anymore. They fear the Death Star. Where are we getting this? Like, as far as I'm concerned, he respect the hell out of Tarkin to the point where you'll listen to him and take orders from him. You'll listen to him, but there were many times that he just wasn't really uh, too happy about it. Uh, taking orders from Tarkin? No. Well, yeah, but what are you referencing, like, to show that he was... I remember something in the Tarkin novel, I don't exactly remember what it was, but I remember I was getting the feeling that he is tired of taking orders from this dude, and the fact that he is now second in command, or third in command, um, from the Emperor. Yeah, like, the, you you can, like, understand why there would be, like, a healthy rivalry and an uncomfortableness uh, about that and everybody working together in that way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't uh, agree with your theory that he wanted to let it happen. No. Um, I, I completely disagree. But I, if I was going to make it, that's that's what I would lean on 100% would be him worried that the culmination of the Death Star would lead to Tarkin solidifying his role in terms of being more important than Vader. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things. Right. That it's no but, longer about his but, abilities in the Force to command or you know destroy people. Uh, it would now just be, hey, you know, the Emperor would call up Tarkin and be like, hey, and you should destroy this entire planet. Like, okay, well, Vader's kind of obsolete at this point. Doesn't really do anything. So he'd be like out of a job. In in the sense he doesn't even care about a job, he'd be out of favorment so that, well, we could go even further so that then the Emperor wouldn't need him so he wouldn't teach him how to save Padme if we want to go really far Well, and make shit up. Well, that, that ship has sailed. <laughs> yeah. He ain't saving Padme and... A new hope no. no so no. no that probably wasn't too much of a factor but uh no i think that I, I think he was trying to stop it the entire time and i think he was doing his damnedest to stop everything that happened um and i don't think so i think really so. no i don't i never thought so he's so effective you, right, and so you, right, hold on so you never thought so you with the first time you watched star wars <laughs> episode four you didn't think that vader you thought vader wanted the death star to be destroyed no when I watched episode four, I didn't really understand anything because I was a kid, six years old. But then as okay. I started to watch more and more and more, and then when I watched Rogue One, that's when I really started to kind of understand. But even, you know, you know what? No, in episode four, I remember he was jealous of the Death Star. That's, how, that's what I felt. That he was like, don't ever think that this weapon is going to be more powerful than what I could do. I, I just, I don't see how that translates into he'd be fine with the... Death Star being destroyed, and then what we because see of if, him in the film because if, he didn't if, he didn't even have to go out there, but he yeah. did. Right, he did. He did to make it look like he was doing something so that the other emperor would be happy with him. Okay. but if he really wanted, if he really wanted, man, he would have just taken his lightsaber, thrown it through the room, just killed everyone. It would all been like in fifty million pieces, and then he would have just retracted the uh, receipt, retrieved the the plans. Easy done. He could have blown that whole door open. Are you kidding me? No way. He, just, he could have just like what he did. Yeah, that, that's, of the what, Sith, that's why it's a bad scene in Rogue One. Yes. <laughs> okay, but this is what I do though. Like in in my videos, I basically like look at the way they write things and I try to make sense of it. So I mean, there's no way that they would write this that stupidly, right? So if Vader really wants to go ham, he's just going to actually like crush every single person, just like he did in Revenge of the Sith when he found out Padme was dead. He crushed the room. In fact, in the concept art, he was supposed to create a whirlwind that like pushed Sidious back and destroyed the whole room but they tapered it down for whatever reason. So he could have done the exact same thing if he really wanted to and like crushed everyone's bones and then just retrieved the plans, but he didn't. He was just toying around with it. I completely disagree with probably both of you. I, I actually yeah. hate excessive force power. I thought that Starkiller bringing what? down the Star Destroyer was cringe as fuck. I think it's so to be dope. To fair, he was just helping guide it. 
as it was crashing. Whatever, you know what right? I'm getting at. Like I with the uh, so name a power in the OT from Vader that would support that he could like annihilate a ship, for example. Well, you don't. What, not in, it's not in the OT. You got to go exactly. EU. That's the, I, exactly I, what I'm I saying. Think, like, well, I, I think when you get into prequels, even but like when when you get in the prequels and you start seeing say the fight between Dooku and Yoda and you start seeing the amount of mass that they can move at a given moment and things like that yeah. then yeah, you start see, seeing like the true destructive you know power you don't even have to go EU who, who are you thinking about in prequels then give me an example Yoda like, Dooku Yo yeah Yoda and Dooku with their duel I mean Sidious like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just bringing the, up yeah in, 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 in Revenge of like, the Sith too <laughs> I'm just bringing up like one specific <laughs> well, scene from... I'm confused. Well, I thought we were all on the same page. When Ray did it, we were like, holy shit, she just outplayed Yoda. Like, that's how excessive they've gotten. But now it seems like you guys are saying that, no, that's the kind of power that Jedi have. Wait, well, Ray, Ray with what? The when she when removed ship? all the boulders, she like she did what was like 10 times what Yoda did. Yeah, but and Yoda had trouble with it. Yeah, but she the, shouldn't the thing be able is, to even do Yoda's that. Yoda's been training for fucking 900 years, and he's got a higher midichlorian count than anyone in history other than Anakin Skywalker. Rain's been training for, not even training. She fucking, someone told her about the Force, and she all of a sudden like downloaded all the schematics, like the Matrix, to be able to use all these abilities that she was never fucking trained to do. So to clarify, it wasn't that it was the it, it was that she needed more training. It wasn't at all that you yes. guys you guys didn't think that out classes like you think Vader could have done that or Yoda. I, I think that, I, I think that Anakin could have done Do you done remember how many she moves like and how big I, they are? No problem. No I, I think problem. Anakin could have literally done something has like that. problem moving them to save uh Obi Wan and Anakin. And he's nine hundred then too. Well, he has enough. no problem. I mean that thing was freaking way bigger no than problem. any of those boulders. Poor that, boy is good as little grunts. That shaft was way bigger than any of those the rocks too Stop he goes <laughs> oh, that he's, shaft. He, he's not he's voice. not going to be able to he's not going to be able to do that and say like run a marathon and lightsaber duel at the same time he has to focus on it yeah but. that's not what i'm pushing for i'm saying that there's nothing we're shown in the prequels or the ot that gets the point of excessiveness that blows up starships with the force powers i in terms of blows up starships in terms of like Force lightning ray or whatever. Um, you want to know Clone think, Wars? Oh, well, he hasn't seen any of Clone Wars. I mean, this is, know. but this is, I'm going to take issue with stuff like that when it happens because, uh, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. rules are set in OT and prequels for power levels. And I fucking hate it when they go further and further and further. It diminishes all the past, it diminishes all the interactions everyone's well, no, had to, since. To before. be fair, the 2D Clone Wars that we're supposed to watch happened in 2002, and that was before. The prequel. So that was before episode five. Mm -hmm. And there were some crazy well, yeah, ass powers in there. There's crazy ass powers. I will also say when it comes to that, due to the stylization of it, like due to the stylization of the Tartakovsky Clone Wars, I think you can justify that some of that stuff is more outrageous than it would be in live action, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, like that's kind of how I view it. But I mean Let's pull up the race scene right now. Let's look at it. Okay. Sure. Uh, wow. I mean, in, in 3D Ray. Clone Wars, Maul did that with a ship as well. The, the ship thing, when, when we now start to see a bunch of people like holding ships back, like from taking off and everything, it's getting like... Well, this is where I'm coming from, where you said like exactly. he could have done that in A New Hope. It's like, no, he couldn't. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's out of the cards. Darth Vader can't grab ships while he's in ships. Well, he he could have, you know what? He he could have done that with the Millennium Falcon. Well, no, <laughs> he could have. He should have. I I draw a line before I feel like this is damaging Star Wars. If you allow moves like that, because it makes everyone stupid. What? Well, hey, we got it in the Kenobi show. He did it with I, that shit. I fucking hate the Kenobi show. <laughs> <laughs> it's your favorite. Yeah. Well. So but the, hold on, let me the, share the argument about Vader and the Death Star. He truly, I truly believe that he felt like it outshined him, and it just made him look inferior, and so he secretly hated it. I never I, got the impression I, that he hated the Death Star. I I could kind of like see that. I I don't think he hates the Death Star. I think he just hates the potential threat to his pecking order. But I don't in any way support the theory. That he was allowing the plans to get away and that he wanted it to get destroyed. I, I, I completely did. reject that wholeheartedly in every way. I think um, it would make it interesting. He didn't want to be, you know, he wanted to be the Emperor's pet, man. He wanted to be numero uno. Also, the other thing, Ryan, when you uh, 
the expression on Ray's face. Like it's barely affected her at all. It, yeah, exactly. Like to to me, I think that you know, well, it is a lot of boulders. What the hell? It's a lot it's of boulders, insane. but like I I think that in the right scenario, you could see Anakin Skywalker doing this. Yeah, of course you could. Like I I don't think we could like, just keep it muted. Right. Keep it muted. I don't want Disney. I need not, a I, we don't we don't need to play it. Like this is it. Oh okay. You know what I mean. Yeah, you can do it with screenshots. The, the, a good screenshot is when they draw when Finn goes to hug her, so you can see the size we're dealing with because the scale is much more clear. How do you guys remember this? I don't. Yeah, and this is the thing. She's Dude, just like she's smiling. Yeah. Theory, yeah. This film launched my channel. Like, it's like oh, okay. Analyzing it in detail. Is oh, like geez, you're, at the, you're you're in their number one fan. Yeah, like oh, he, yeah. He, here's like the boulders in the background again. It it's a lot of fucking boulders clearly i i think it's justifiable to say i it's think nothing. anakin skywalker could do that yeah that's nothing compared to what yoda did in the senate chamber man with those tw freaking hurling twisting revolving uh pods man no way these it's boulders even... will put together way more heavy and way more mass than the the pods yeah but to be able to harness the level of force concentration let's say that yoda had to do while jumping and using the force like if your force is like like a meter, right? If you're using the force to like jump, protect yourself, use force speed, uh, block freaking attacks from Palpatine while like <laughs> simultaneously like stopping this thing and spinning it and then sh hurling it back. I mean, like that's okay. you're using way more of the force than Ray ever could. This is where I mean, like I feel like I'm a different kind of Star Wars fan. This is why this is probably gonna work out this fucking podcast. <laughs> like, <All so>. right. <laughs> when I watch Empire and I see Yoda and I'm like, what a ridiculous little goblin man, and then he he is able to translate to us so thoroughly what's so important about a warrior, about a like a paladin type mage, oh, sorry, sage type creature that is right. so intelligent and attuned, and you're like, you, you shouldn't be about judging what they look like and all that stuff. And like a huge payoff for his power and understanding is very carefully and slowly lifting the X-Wing and moving it slightly over. What a fucking magical scene, and it lands. Mm -hmm. And he's tired. He's pretty exhausted from that, because that's an amazing thing that he just did. I don't want to see in future... Yoda grabs another sky and crushes it with his fist and explodes. Yeah. And he's like, fuck, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, no, 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 no. The Force, to me, like, as soon as we get more and more excessive, I think it creates those moments where the fan base will go fucking nuts. And even I'll enjoy a lot of them as well. But then I'm like, oh, shit. This what is did we just do, though? What did yeah. we do to the power scaling? I, I totally hear that. What did, what's your take on Size Matters Not? You think you're just talking about his dick or what? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but also, you know, Yoda does die like three years after that, so he is pretty he, old. He had that was actually what did it. That was like a long. Also, he, he outforced himself, <laughs> like Luke did. I mean, the funny thing never realized, is, like, as far as I'm concerned, the most like powerful you probably are with the Force is going to be the older you are. Like, the more, yeah, I know, wouldn't surprise me anyway. But you know what? I mean, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, you compare Yoda in Revenge of the Sith when he was like going ham on the clone troopers when they were trying to get back into the temple with him and Obi-Wan. And he's just like freaking jumping, like throwing his lightsaber through the chest of one it's clone. Like, like my bad one of my favorite dude. levels in the Revenge of the Sith video game is when you get that. <laughs> like when you when you're Obi-Wan and, and Yoda you know, getting back into the Jedi temple. When I saw that moment that theories referred to, I remember being like, finally, a lightsaber throw. Fuck. Yes. Know, like one of the yeah. coolest ones ever. It's like, oh. there you go. I actually saw a, I think it was a sideshow collectible of that, that literal moment where Yoda's like, got his saber thrusted through a 501st. Pretty cool. We got a Gary in chat. I'm pretty sure he just outright despises the prequels. He should be here. Does he? Get that, get that I didn't know that. In there. Well, I don't know if he would say that. He might. <laughs> it where is he? I, I think he would say, I, I think he would say I didn't like them, but I don't think he but would the thing say is, despises. Honestly, I think part of what his reasoning would be would be what I was just describing. I think he took the OT that way and he'd see the prequels like, do you remember the con conversations about like jumping around too many lightsabers, too much force use? It's, it's, it's yeah. diminishing, yeah. you know, the mystical sense of it. Mm. So, yeah. you know, there's, this is but, what I mean. It's like, there's loads of schools of thought on this. So my, my argument towards that is, well, the only sort of lightsaber fights we saw were Vader toying with his son and Luke, who like <laughs> just got a lightsaber recently and doesn't really know how to even use the force or use it. So it's like we got two people that aren't even trying to show their full capabilities in the force at all. So versus the prequel trilogy, which was like the highlight era of everything. Where they well, yeah, were, I'm like... like Peak. I'm of two minds because I think that the prequel era, the an era where the Jedi were in full power, is incredibly interesting to explore, and we will see a lot of Jedi as a result of that. Obviously, yeah. 
I agree. What do you think about the Acolyte? <laughs> you think uh, that's going to be peak Jedi? Oh, man. Dude, they changed it now to 50 years before The Phantom Menace. I always thought it was 200 years. So, so I'm going to have that, a big problem with this because the Plagueis, I mean, is so prevalent at this time. So High Republic takes place like 200 years or something, right? Um, but the, this is... This at the Acolyte's always been pushed as the end of the High Republic era, moving into kind of closer to Phantom Menace. So it makes sense that it's fifty years. Man, they're they're gonna make Plagueis a chick. Come on. <laughs> you know you think, they are. Do you think they're even gonna like mention him? I don't know how you. I feel well, like they'll pull that card eventually. Surely. I, I would say I don't know how they couldn't, um, but this is Disney Star Wars, so. And I don't know the headland. I also don't know how much like the the Plagueis book is not current canon. No, right? they got they got rid of it. So I don't even actually know what the deal is with in terms of Plagueis, in terms of that time frame, in terms of what happens with him. I don't know in modern Disney canon what it even means. So maybe they have got free reign to do a lot of stuff. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Did I read that one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what, it, that took us down a 30-minute tangent. <laughs> yeah, literally. Uh, so how yeah, much do we have to pay to see Theory or Ryan go, full of, go on a full synth, synthetic man meltdown? What does that You're mean? not going to get that from you... them because they don't... <laughs> they don't have his fucking views. Um... You just have to give a... Oh, that's a guy. The guy, right. I still haven't searched him up. I don't know who synthetic man is. Um, Let's just say uh, he outclasses the both of you significantly for a controversial statement. So we'll put it that way. Nice. Even me? Times 10, Ryan. You wouldn't even come close. Really? Nah, I, need to, I need to up my game. <laughs> but is he like, as does he get as clipped as, as us? Oh, probably. Like uh, anybody pretty much does on the internet of any kind of like level of fame, especially of any kind of level of d developing people who hate them. But uh, mm -hmm. we covered him on EFAP. He, um, he has opinions that i hesitate to share like I'd be like i don't know it's a little bit spicy gotta be careful but um let's just put it this way i'm fine especially if i was in control of youtube for everybody to be here uh it would be pretty extreme you'd have to be for me to think like it's worth banning or whatever i have no idea how he's still going uh with some of the stuff that he said but hey you know best of luck because sounds YouTube... like i need to subscribe <laughs> You know what you you go right ahead. We've uh if anyone wants to know specifically what I'm talking about, we covered about EFAP two seventeen, I think. Uh it's near near check out the last hour. That's where you'll find the stuff I'm talking about. We have to be in the video game market by continuously canceling games and other than Jedi only release meh games. Seems legit. Yesterday was my birthday. Happy birthday, Geek Adventure team. Bought a saber from you to treat myself. Thank you, dude. Keep on being you, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, and happy birthday, and I hope you enjoy the saber when it ships out. Hell yeah. Canceling Star Wars 1313 and the Darth Maul game was a crime. Yeah, that, that Maul game looked pretty sweet. Did you guys see that? 1313 was like, I was so hyped for that. Mm-hmm. Theory and Mauler, are you familiar at all with the Star Wars Galaxy of Fear books? Short reads, but well done. Spore is my favorite of these. I'm not. No. No. Ryan, are you? Not. Yeah, Galaxy of there. There's it's again. It's like a young, young adult novels. Got it. You know what I mean? So they're out there. Darth Demos twenty six. Imagine they remastered the old Star Wars games while they developed new games for the next three to five years. So there's time to make good game while playing some yeah i mean the, there's obviously many different business models that they could try and practice but for some reason they're not what's up rossi how would you guys feel about bringing iron man back boo yeah i don't want to bring anybody back man <laughs> don't kill people and bring them back you know it's tough <laughs> i'm not really interested in anybody being oh, wait back. are you being serious yeah, being serious. What? Thanos? If I just told you that Thanos Asajj thing? Ventress came back from the dead, you'd fucking, like, come because you want her in Ahsoka. <laughs> what are you talking about? I just think she's much better than Reva. <laughs> yeah, but what, 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 I'm, what I'm asking about is that specific question. Ryan, just though. fucking erroring out here. Like. Ryan, yeah. we're never going to get a good female character. 
other than and Ahsoka's probably the best we're gonna get. So if we can get like some sort of something close, like Talon or freaking Asajj, already established characters from before Disney fucked up everything. What do you think hey, is gonna happen when we, they come back? Yeah, like it doesn't matter. Like, guess what? Like Han Solo is an established character before yeah, Disney I mean, took the, over. It's like, what do you mean? Whether or not they're established, they'll get ruined. Like new character, old character, doesn't matter. Most people, the general advice is don't bring back the old ones because it hurts more when you destroy them. I'm still hopeful. I'm hopeful someone there has a brain, you know? Maybe well, then if one, you're hopeful that someone still has a brain, why do we need to bring back anybody? Just make good characters, right? Well, mm -hmm. they're not going to do that. Because they, 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 need, they, they, need, they need some pre-established lore to kind of like, oh, okay, this is where the character kind of goes. And then if they veer off it, it's like fucked up. But it's not as fucked up as they create like a new character, I, which fucks everything I, up I, like I Reva. I disagree. I think that it's far worse when they are taking characters that are already established and they fucking destroy them. Guess what? I would rather have had an Obi-Wan Kenobi series that was made by the same team of writers, the same incompetency, that did not involve Obi-Wan Kenobi or Darth Vader. Yeah, like if the main character second, was... Because it would do less damage to Star Wars. Yeah, if it was like Jimbo yeah, Kebab I, or something was the main that. character and you had to take around some girl called y y Yalube, It's Yolanda. This... Yeah, I and mean, it would be like, who cares? Yeah. I Jimbo Kebab. <laughs> What? But it would still take place on Tatooine, <laughs> just to be clear. Obviously Tatooine. <laughs> Fuck it all, yeah. yeah. I, I, rest in peace, Cad Benulin. Yeah. <laughs> What's your guys' opinions on the Gears of War franchise and which game was your favorite? Uh, the first one was my first and second, I'd say. It was pretty good. Anything after that is kind of just... Well, once Blazinski got out of there, man, it just kind of went downhill. Uh, Gears of War 2 was my, my baby. I mm -hmm. played that shit ton online. Mm-hmm. I was never super into Gears. I only played at other people's houses. So okay. I played one and two, but don't really have a... Have yeah, it. those were the best. Will Mahler read the Thrawn trilogy, a.k.a. The, the real sequel? Probably, uh, not. probably not. Let's be real. We're still trying to get, convince him to watch a cartoon. Let's uh, hold off on reading for a little bit. I don't even know how to do that. An audio book it if you want. Do they still make like books? Do they write stuff these days? They do. Man. You know what I heard? Video games is apparently a thing that people play. I've heard the youngins, the youngsters, yeah, are the really youngers. starting to get into video games. I guess we, uh, as Disney, it's our it's our duty to be in that space. <laughs> what, a, what an old piece of shit. <laughs> what like, an what old a thing to say. <laughs> like, what, what an old. Like, just look at Bob Iger. What an old. How, how can you actually say that? You know, I was really surprised when I looked into <laughs> what Gen Z and even millennials are spending their screen time on, and over half of it was video games. Do you but guys like, know about the mobile phone? <laughs> oh my god, dude! Literally, that's what it sounds like. Happy early Valentine's Day, guys! Great, thanks. Have any of you seen the movie Love and Monsters? Great character journey for the main protagonist and lots of monsters. No. I've no. not seen this. Happy Valentine's Day, bro. There's a what Doctor Who episode it's... called Love and Monsters. That's excellent. I recommend Her name's it. Ruby. So I assume it's a female. I don't know. Oh, okay. Happy Valentine's it's a, Day. If it's a boy named Ruby. Oof. Weird. I can only hope Deadpool kills the MCU like he did in the comics. That would be a great way to reset. He knows the meta. So, was, oh, shit. He did I... kill the MCU, didn't he? Yeah, I made a video about that, like five months ago or something. It's like, this is how they could save Marvel, but they won't. It wouldn't even save Marvel. It would just be, we'd feel like the one film is in on the joke that everything sucks. Well, this is this is what I prefaced. Um, and they, they won't do it, but you basically make the entire thing into a meme, shitting all over multiverses, and Deadpool goes and kills, he kills She-Hulk, he kills Black Captain America. He literally kills every single character in our current iteration of the MCU. And when you pop out, like this new multiverse has a completely recasted, um, a completely recasted Avengers team, a fully casted X Men team, and a fully cast Fantastic Four team, and you basically reboot the MCU. Now, that's no that's no guarantee that it would be good or anything like that. But if you actually wanted to move forward without all the baggage that you've created for yourself in this universe, that is something you could realistically do. And I think people would be on board with it. And it'd be done in a funny way. 
Yeah, I'm remember he was, when he was looking at the TVA stuff, he was like literally watching Avengers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what so you like, is he going to go back in time on that? or? The, dude, the amount of shit they've stolen from Avengers, specifically the 2012 movie, and all these layer projects, like quotes and characters and stuff and timelines, references all go back to it, because it really is where like the MCU was fully launched. It's so sad to look back and be like, yeah, we ain't getting there again. Uh, so as cool. for the movie of like him killing the MCU, you know, uh, concept and idea and stuff, it would, like, it would be cool, but then it's like, we need to worry about who's writing it and whether or not they do it well, and yeah. then your idea of like launching a bunch of teams after it, it's just like, we're so far away from them ever entertaining doing anything like that, that it's like, it's a cool idea, but it's just so, it, it's just as far out of the realm of possibility as like fucking decanonizing the sequels, you know, it's just like, it's just never gonna yeah. happen. Really. It's why I, th- I think the title of my video is uh, Deadpool 3 could save the MCU, but they won't, but they won't do it or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, cause yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll never admit to that type of failure. Uh, when you virtue signal about all these different characters that you're so proud of and, and all this, you, you can't then erase them. Um, which is a problem when they're failures. What up Gary? Oh, he's talking about love and monsters. He means to say bad movie and the doc two episodes amazing. And he fully recommends it. 100%. Gary, sorry. Uh, you, you caught me like a deer in headlights when I saw you there. I was like, <laughs> he's like, he's like during the meetup, he comes in. She's like, he's like, Hey, and I like shook his hand. He's like off in the corner. He's like, I'm just staring at him. I didn't fucking say anything. It's the first time. Well, hey, reading. you and like then, putting uh, people on the spot. We should. Uh, we should. Like, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, c- come here, dude. Let's take a photo. Is uh, what? What'd you say? We should invite him to next week's dog rift. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Anytime. Do it right now. If he doesn't answer, he's a coward. We should put it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would still screw all of the previous MCU. Oh, this, this is what I mean. Like, if we were to actually fix it, it's all decanonized. Decanonize phase four and five. Get rid of it all. Get rid of Endgame, man. Redo it. Get us, uh, as, as Theo was pointing out, right? Like, he wants to see Thanos come back because what we got was like lame soy Thanos. And it's like, I completely agree. We should yeah, have dude. fucking cool Thanos, but redo Endgame. Just redo it. Redo fucking Game of Thrones season eight. Redo Star Wars sequel trilogy. Yeah, redo them. Normalize this shit. Why do we never entertain the idea that we can do it again? I, I'm more of a proponent of just stop for like five years. Well, start, both and start, yeah, and like start fresh um, while decanonizing it. You know what I mean? Like take a five year break from Star Wars. Everything that happened since George signed on the dotted line is erased. I don't give a fuck if you like Star Wars Rebels or whatever. It gets yeeted from existence. Right? Yay. That's the only way to do it the right way. Go back to the purchase date and erase everything. Start from 2012. These guys got it. I'm in a car. Hmm. I don't know what that means. I, I, I think a car means. is like a is, is it wheels. I know that, but I don't know what these guys <laughs> got it means. The engine. It's been a weird these couple guys. weeks. Lost my job. Can always rely on theory to cheer things up. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Andy Bay. When one door closes, another one will open in time. That's right. Ops on Obi One season two. Ray or Padme for a wipe. Padme, obviously. I mean, yeah. My, oh yeah, Thrawn knows Padme. Yeah. <laughs> my, my opinion on Obi Wan season two is, I think it's ironic that uh, after Ewan was kind of used by Star Wars and Lucasfilm to attack a fan base and label everyone as racist just because he didn't like a character who was like the fourth or fifth, you know, biggest problem in a terrible Obi Wan Kenobi series, and you tried to blame the fans for all that backlash to cover up for your dog shit show that you put out. It's ironic that now he's begging those very same fans uh, to ask Disney for a season two of Kenobi. I find I never that saw ironic. It like that. I saw it like he was targeting the people who were being racist. Do, do you really think that all that because of two Instagram DMs? Two. Bro, it was probably way more than two. Oh, we saw two. So. Um, and I can tell you that I get way more than that on a daily fucking basis for whatever for reason, sure. right? Do, do you, so sure you really think do. that two Instagram DMs, but no one cares about is us. worth, do you really think that two Instagram DMs is worth basically the full might of the entire mainstream media, all of Lucasfilm, all of star Wars, every star out there basically saying it's not right. We all need to stand up for this because of two fucking Instagram DMs that we actually saw. It was probably much more than two. I'll say it was probably like hundreds most likely. Okay, do, do you get hate ever for things that people don't like about you, Theory? Oh my god, every day. Are you kidding? You know you know that. You yeah, know me too, because you, you're put, putting people something out there and people are judging time. you. 
what yeah. what was done with Obi Wan Kenobi clearly was a PR attempt to justify all the bad shit that people were saying about the show and make it into this is the problem. It's obviously just racist and bigots out there. Oh, I don't. Uh, that, that's that. where all the noise. And that's what I, I mean. Don't, I don't like. Deny that's that. what Lucasfilm took part in. They got Ewan that. McGregor wrapped up in all of that. That's what they tried to do. This is three episodes in. What did they say? They told Moses Moses Ingram before it even happened. There's a lot of racists out there. They're not going to like you, and we're going to blame it all on them. They told her that. She admitted it flat out in interviews. Um, so I think it's ironic that after trying to uh, label a certain section of Star Wars fans as racist because they didn't like a certain character, that uh, you're now begging those very same fans that you said aren't Star Wars fans to uh, beg Disney. I don't think he's, he's season two. I don't think he's begging those exact fans. I think he was addressing sure the people who were assholes obviously that were racist pricks but the the people who are just star wars fans in general that want to see a season two i think he's just dressing those i, don't, I wouldn't say that he's, he's trying to ask those same exact people those that was like maybe what like a thousand people probably i mean there's millions of us that are actual just star wars fans want to see the show i just couldn't believe the state of fucking star wars the ewan mcgregor has to beg fans to tell disney that we want more of his obi-wan well it's because the they, 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 they wrote the shittiest fucking that's what i'm show. saying it's unreal. Right? It, like it, if they wrote a good show, they, nobody would have to ask anybody anything, right? That's the thing. It, the numbers would speak for themselves. Yeah, it shouldn't be the case. Like if five years ago you said that Ewan McGregor, uh, who plays Obi Wan Kenobi, is like desperate to do an Obi Wan Kenobi series for Lucasfilm. The idea of them saying no or turning it down or whatever would be a little bit wild, even five years ago. Well, it's it, dude, and, it's so it, stupid. I agree. I think it's 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 absolutely ridiculous. I mean, an Obi Wan show is literally probably going to make them more money than any other show that they could ever make. They just have to do it right. Well, I I think it's a good thing that they don't make one. <laughs> I think it's a good thing too, to, <laughs> because they wouldn't do it right, though, right? Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you get three of us to write it, we'll probably do a great job. Or John Favreau to write it, he'll probably do a great job. Mm. Mando season three. I, anyone? I truly think that Mando season three was a product of him just being like, "Fuck this, you guys do it," because they were just getting two in his hair. I just don't think that that dude would let that happen to that show. I think there were way too many cooks in the kitchen, and Kathy probably just like pushing for this and that, and this person pushing for this and that, and they just went with some like bullshit script. Book of Boba Fett. The whole reason they did that show from what I've heard, is simply to have Grogu come back. I so think... What are you, are you saying uh, that like it's bad because they weren't focused on the correct things, but yeah. we hope in future they will be? Right. I feel like just watching it, you see all the connective tissue for any different thing they wanted to do. It was horrifically done. Like, it's hyper-incompetence. It wasn't just that they're trying to get Grogu back in, but Book of Boba Fett was bad well before that even happened. Yeah, it was shit. Well, I mean, the first two episodes I really liked. And I'm like, oh, cool. This is going somewhere. <laughs> when was the last time you watched them? When it came out. It's from, like, all right. <laughs> I just thought it was fucking terrible. Yeah, dude, I, I don't know. It's. I, I will say, I think that one of the causes potentially for maybe some of the rush job with a lot of it, specifically, Maul, you know this about the Boba Fett episode of season two of Mandalorian. And how yeah. quickly they like forced him in there. I do think a lot of people felt that Pedro was going to leave the show and that they wanted a backup, a stand in, like to shift to focus on Boba Fett. And that's why he was in that show to begin with. Yeah. That's probably why he got a standalone show. So if you want to argue about maybe rush job and no reason for this, I think there's some like arguments to be made. But Mando season three, it was Favreau's idea to bring in Lizzo to that thing. Like that, ain't, what? Uh, yes, that's his idea. He's been open about that because the kids saw Lizzo like do some <laughs> Star Wars thing on TikTok. What? Yes, <laughs> this Favreau, the man who did the Jungle Book and the live action Lion King, that Favreau, yes. And I, per again, personally, I do think that three is a step down from two, but I don't think it's as big as people make it out to be. I think the difference is the jangling keys that you have in season three of Mandalorian are Jack Black and Lizzo instead of Ahsoka and Bo-Katan and, and Boba Fett and all these like characters that people 
like care more about luke yeah. skywalker like yeah. those were the jangling keys distracting people from the bad writing in season two yeah. and there wasn't as the, the keys were very dull uh and not very shiny in season three yeah dude it's bullshit i don't even know what the hell happened there it was just like let's it just seems like these shows are now focusing on completely other characters like maybe supporting characters so like boba focuses on on mando mando now focuses on Bo. <laughs> mando focuses on Bo, and uh what? you know obi-wan focuses on reva it's weird it's like it's kind of at this point like if we're going to get a vader show it's going to probably focus on like i don't know mon mothma or something like that who knows oh well, hey hold out hope for uh jimbo kebab he might be in it jimbo kebab yeah so somebody asked me uh, a question really quick do you have proof for your claims about fucking john favreau and lizzo or whatever yes of course i do uh can you share this real quick john favreau reveals story behind lizzo getting cast the kids actually were showing me on social media that lizzo was posting a lot of stuff around this is it would be like dad doing all these baby yoda videos if we're like we could do something really cool and interesting and wouldn't it be great to be working with somebody who's really cool and so excited to be working with uh with grogu so yes there you go john favreau it was john favreau's idea not everything bad that happens in star wars because of kathleen kennedy oh well, that's news to me fuck <laughs> jesus christ I'm here it's to like, take it, away it, everyone's hope. I was going to say, well, no, we're both spirit drainers. We'll get him. We'll kill him. Don't worry, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> this also would say this is a depressing Star Wars podcast. Like, well, until Star Wars is fucking uplifting, it's going to be depressing. Isn't oh, it? That shaft was way bigger than pauses to realize the clips that are going to be made. Mm. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> that. Best version of Force Unleashed PS3 or PS2? Well, I don't know the difference. Uh, fuck! I'm trying to remember the differences because I know that it was crazy. They had like the whole PSP version as well. That was a that was a crazy time for video games. Hey, you did, had, you, like, did you guys see the new minutes. the new um PlayStation thing? The the you said it's PSP, the new handheld. I forgot what it's called. No, I didn't. Oh, dude, Ryan, you seen this? I don't know. I don't it think looks so. Awesome. Looks Does Ryan hit a video sick. game? A new PlayStation Portable. Yeah, dude, it looks amazing. All right, what's oh, so amazing about it? I don't know, it just looks cool, man. Oh, is it the one that like goes between, like that? It looks like it's between a PS5 controller. Is that <laughs> yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes, I, I did see like a screenshot, but I don't know how much they are or anything. I think they're three hundred bucks. They are, yeah. PlayStation Portal Remote Player. Yeah, it looks really cool. You can like play every game on it. And it looks just as good. Well, I think just as good as the PS5. Um, here, let me sh share the screen so you guys can see this. Here you go. And get it at Walmart. Wow. Yeah, we're not sponsored. I wish. We need to start getting sponsorships, man. I'm down. I'm well known for uh, you. Know, <laughs> really want to? People really want to be in business with me. So. Yeah, me too. And okay, Mahler. We can, we can plug our own shit. Ryan, do you have merch or something? Uh, not really. Uh, you can go to my website. I got merch on my website, rkapples.com, but I haven't, I haven't really up. You don't have anything you, you plug? Not really. Only my channel and stuff. And, uh, yeah. all right. Mahler? Yeah. I, I need to get, get on it. Hmm. You guys gotta, all right. We gotta, we gotta be better at building that brand, you know? Yeah. Listen, I'm here to play games, watch films, and chat. Yeah, take over every podcast. That too. Yeah. It's a work in progress. Yeah, it's going pretty good. Uh, I think after Blood Raven took Dark Sister north of the wall, it's only right John gets it and fights young Griff with it. Blackfire versus Dark Sister would be cool. Who are these people? Uh, so, yeah, Song so let's talk about Fire. Song Ice and Fire. Um, yeah, so I don't know what's going on with Dark Sister. Um, we don't know what's going on with Dark Sister. The idea, a lot of people think that Young Griff will get Blackfire at some point, uh, but I, I don't, I don't fucking know, man. Like, I think that I don't think we need John to have Dark Sister. I think it's okay if he doesn't have it. 
I just think it's funny that the guy was like, I want to talk some Song of Ice and Fire today. Like, Thanks, I, Micah. He, he's already got a fucking sick uh, Valerian Steel Blade. Oh, did I miss this? If you don't remove Mahler and Ryan from the stream right now, me and a handful of others will also unsubscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. I think yeah. I think we've lost the actual one. I'll do you one better. <laughs> So, uh, Ryan, how about that new Jimbo Kebab show? Jimbo Kebab and the Ghosts of Tatooine. Ooh, it was such a good title. Guess and they Bear came through. Luke to die when he didn't pull him back up when he attempted to self-delete. But yeah, he can pull ships down. Ray Clips should be flagged for disinformation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he knew Luke would be all right. <laughs> yeah, that's... A See, this is the thing. Me and Mahler see like things that happen, and we're like, "Wow, it's kind of silly that you would write it this way." And Theory's like, "Well, you know what? I'm it gonna make sense. these terrible writers work by making it make, make sense in my brain." Because I love the French. You know, you know what I am. I'm like, what's that shit called? I just used it the other day. You know, when you have like a hole in a wall, and you like put the thing over it, and you put the putty over it. You're like you, that like, great. Out. You're like that great that like holds it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's like, hey, this big hole in the wall? Yeah, I got an explanation for it. It was never there. It just helps me sleep at night, you know? You're just trying to patch up the drywall. I'm coping. I'm using my, my creativity to cope. What's Although I love, the, little bit. <laughs> I love the concept of pulling a Star Destroyer out of the air, the force has to be capped or have restrictions. Otherwise, it becomes outrageous. Uh... What do you guys oh, you don't want Eddie cap? <laughs> yeah, yeah so there, there has to be a... No. Right. I don't want there to cap. No, there has to be, if you are going to do extraordinary feats, there must be a, a like something that happens because of that, right? Um, whether that's getting too tired or, or whatever it is, right? Something has to happen as a ramification of doing like an incredibly powerful thing. Yeah, you can get tired. Right. For instance, strange. there's a there's a pretty cool thing that Luke does in the New Jedi Order books where um basically there's Yuzong Vong use biotech and they essentially have a creature called a Dovin basal that generates kind of mini, mini gravity wells, mini black holes and stuff. They use to propel their ships, but they also use to absorb, um, you know, incoming fire. And what Luke does, he's essentially able to like control that. It's really hard for me. He has to concentrate. He can't fly or anything. He has to sit there and meditate. He's able to basically control that and push it. So it folds in and out in, up, in on itself and destroys that entire ship. But after he does it, it, it uses such an immense amount of force for in concentration that he actually fucking passes out. Um, and they like show that in the book. So that's like an incredible feat that he performs. And there's a, there's a price to pay for it. He couldn't just go through and do that a million times. He would pay the price. Have you read the Star Wars Jedi Academy Obi-Wan books? I have not. Have you? The Jedi Academy Obi-Wan books. Do you mean Jedi Apprentice books? Is that what you mean? Oh, if you those? mean the Jedi Apprentice novels, I've read the fuck out of those. Theory, love everything you do. Keep up the good work. Mahler understands the Force is more powerful than just forcing people to believe lies and choking people, right? Um, No, I don't. That's the only thing you can do with the Force is Force choke. All right. There you have it. Bring in Darth Melvin. I need the laughter. I saw Melvin at the convention. He was walking around. I even uh, tagged him in it in the vlog. Let's keep it going. Should Disney bring Luke back? <laughs> Bix, Vel, Sinta, Dedra, Mon, etc. are the best girls. Oh. oh. No. All the Andor girls. Is there any news on the Rogue Squadron movie, or is that dead in the water? I'd love for that to happen. It was one of the best games on N64. It's dead. It's dead, Jim. Yeah, no one uh, complained when Patty Jenkins was making her movie. That's because she hadn't come out with Wonder Woman 84 yet. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't make stupid-ass claims. Correct. Yeah, that was... Uh... When Patty Jenkins was introduced, she told this like really cool story about her dad being a fighter pilot and how she always wanted to do kind of a dog fighting fighter pilot movie, but can never really find a way to wake it, make it work. But she always loved Star Wars. Now she's able to tell a story combining two things that she loves, and she's yeah. going to do a Rogue Squadron movie. Yeah, everybody was down with that yeah. because it's like okay, 
we've seen Patty Jenkins do a couple things. Uh, she did Wonder Woman, which obviously Mueller has problems with. But overall, there's a pretty good sentiment out there about Wonder Woman. Not like it's a masterpiece or anything, but it's a, that most people think it's a decent movie. Um, Chris Pine carries that movie hard. 84? I, like, I like Chris Pine. No, just the main Wonder like Chris Woman Pine's movie. Well. Um, but I remember this. There, there was no backlash for a woman directing Star Wars because it was just portrayed as somebody who was passionate about making this, was passionate about Star Wars, and wanted to make a movie. That's fucking cool. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I will say, if this announcement had been in the aftermath of the disastrous Wonder Woman 1984, there probably would have been more backlash to Patty Jenkins, not because she's a woman, but because she had just come out with a fucking horrible movie where she was mm -hmm. not just the director, but was in charge of everything. Um, so I do think there would have been pushback. Well, we've kind of seen this with Taika Waititi. Once upon a time, I think people would have been okay with it. But after Love and Thunder, after even some of the stuff he's just said, it's like nobody wants him near Star Wars now. Yeah. Did Vader feel the same way about the second Death Star? Bro, you probably felt the same way about all of them. I hate that shit. The third and the fourth one, too. That's what I think. Even yeah. the fifth. The ninth. Uh, Exegol. Love the vids theory. What Did you know in the comics he knew about Exegol? <laughs> he never told Luke? Yeah, 100% yeah, no, well, he did. He went you, there. That That's established technically by Rise of Skywalker. He get, yeah, because that's where Kylo gets the thing, yeah. is from Vader. Fucking yep. dumb. <laughs> And this is this is what I mean. Now that you have Anakin appearing in the Ahsoka series to Ahsoka to give her some last fucking training, last mesh, whatever. Fuck, you can't fucking do that to Luke Skywalker and remind him about fucking Exegol. Yeah. This is the fucking problem when you continue to bring these characters back over and over again for these little bullshit things, not for what they actually should be doing. Well, Luke and has it, to die for that to happen. It increasingly makes like so little no, sense. He means, he means visit Luke. Yeah. Force ghost know. him. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Force ghost yeah. him. Or pull. Why don't you pull Luke Skywalker in the world between worlds? Cocksucker. You don't care about your fucking kid? I know, bro. I know. <laughs> Love the vids. What are your guys' thoughts on an Old Republic trilogy? Yeah, sweet. Just... There's not much in Star Wars I'm not okay with exploring if it's done well. Disney will continue cool to... Oh, I'm sorry. Continue no, that's it. Right. You paused and I jumped in. I'm sorry. Disney will continue to suffer if Deadpool doesn't kill the MCU and shut down everything without a full reboot and admitting failure in Lucasfilm. They ain't doing that. <laughs> Jesus. At this point, the writer doesn't matter as much as usual. Nothing gets better until DEI is removed. Uh, I'm hoping... Who's DEI? diversity equity and inclusion standards Got it. let's okay. say you have to hire this amount of people and check yeah, this yeah. many boxes yeah. for not just who's in front of the camera but also who's behind the camera who's in the writer's room all that stuff right right well we should have a let's just focus on story fucking yeah. the donating to ryan's therapy fund after the psychic damage he took from reading josh brolin's poetry josh brolin's written poetry yeah, Josh Brolin wrote poetry about his co-stars in Dune, and he has one about what? Timothy Chalamet that makes it sound like he wants to fuck him. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you guys didn't know about this? No. Man. No. All right. Well, let me pull something up and educate y'all real quick. It's um, poetry. It's probably just romanticized. Yeah, but it's a 55-year-old man romanticizing a 25-year-old man. Uh, which, hey, hey. Go for it, I guess. I would feel weird if a my 55-year-old co-worker, my male 55-year-old co-worker came and said this to me. But maybe, uh, maybe it's out of love. Who knows? Let's see. What's it about? Josh Brolin wrote a poem about Timothy Chalamet on the set of Dune Part 2 for a book he and the cinematographer are releasing. This is about Timothy. I, face, I'll, I'll read that, it if you oh, want. Please. Yeah, go. Your face is etched by adolescence. Your cheekbones jump toward what are youth-laden eyes that slide down a prominent nose and onto lips of a certain poetry. And the way you hold my gaze makes me fear my own age. Because something in me tells me you're going to offer me something, and for now, I'm not sure it's going to be something I want anymore. That's pretty gay. What? 
sounds to me like he's book? sounds homoerotic a little bit. It sounds to me like he's afraid of how much he wants to fuck Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> like, I, is there any other way to interpret it? I mean, hey man, I'm all I'm all for I'm all for people loving who they want to love, but yeah, that's that's pretty homoerotic. Sounds well. I mean, with true. what Ryan said earlier, so if, let's say we worked on the film and then, you know, fucking Ryan wrote this about theory. I'd be like, dude, don't show him. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not only not only don't show him, don't publish a book about it. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, what are the comments saying? This is incredibly weird. Well, that was weird. Hmm. That weird. Hmm. Well, that's one name on the Epstein list confirmed. <laughs> mm, gay. Uh, sus. Josh Brolin is Gurney Halleck. Now, Gurney is a poet. Like, Gurney is a poet, so I get why he wanted to do something like this. Uh... Sounds like Timothy is offering Brolin man love and he's unsure if he wants to accept. <laughs> but years ago, it would have been a yes for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? He didn't like drama and I was fucking Shakespeare. Uh, some things are better off not being shared. This is gayer than sex with another man. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff like that. All Interesting. Right. That's uh, all right. Well, hey, uh, All right, it goes. That poetry goes well with a Dune popcorn bucket. Um. Yeah. After a false alarm on theory talks a couple of weeks ago, finally welcomed another youngling last week. Only fitting. I was in my sixty-six hoodie and hat. Oh, dude! Right on, man! Congratulations! Welcome. It's amazing. Yeah, check. Can we all get some clapping hand emojis? Excellent. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. You're welcome. Mahler has tentacles. He can't clap. You can hear yeah. like a clappy sound. That's why he never shows his face. Y- y'all can say what you want about Book of Boba Fett. Book of Boba Fett? Mm-hmm. Book of mm-hmm. Boba. Fett theory. Well, why is there a T? Book of Boba Fett theory. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mandalorian and Ahsoka, but I think Obi-Wan Kenobi was the biggest sin of the Disney Plus shows. I agree. Um, I, I, I don't think it's... I think that Book of Boba Fett is like the worst overall product. Um, but I think that the Obi-Wan Kenobi series does way more damage and is more disrespectful to a lot of shit. Yeah, I think... So I, I agree with... Care. I kind of agree with the super chatter yeah. from my perspective. I agree with your perspective, right? I'm very excited for the... <laughs> uh, what if instead of his name being Anakin, his name was Anakin Freakwalker and he ate... All right. Yeah. He ate ass and sucked toes. All right. What's your thoughts on Elon Musk versus Disney and maybe buying Disney? Maybe he will save Star Wars. I made a video on it. You can go check it out. I think... I think he's just memeing. You think Elon's just memeing? Probably, yeah. I think he's just trying to make life hard for Bob Iger because Bob Iger uh, pulled Tried advertisements to... on Twitter and yeah, shit. Yeah. So I really think he's just trying to fuck with him a little bit. That's funny. Mm-hmm. For the good Lord's sake, well, exactly now what he's doing with Gina, right? He probably hates him. For the good Lord's sake, cancel Disney Plus. Was Jean Grey from X Men just a Sith Lord? Yes. PS2 Wii version of The Force Unleashed is the complete version of the game. PS3 360 version locks half the levels behind DLC and even changes the bosses and story structure. Highly recommend oh. PS2. I didn't know this. I think I oh. knew it at some point, but I've forgotten it. It's I like... have no idea. Well, yeah. Who had the most risen Star Wars? My votes, Jar Jar? Uh, we Lando? Lando's, uh, Lando's even fucking the droids, so yeah. <laughs> he makes them uh, circuit overload. Maybe R2-D2. Hmm. If we could ever get, like, actually figure out what he's saying, maybe it's R2. That could be. Love the content. Have you seen the new season of Halo series and its egregious disregard for the source material? I have not. I'm watching it. It's painful. This is season two? Yeah, yeah. It's uh It's out? Not an upgrade. Yeah, two episodes are out already. Oh crazy. On what? Uh Paramount Plus. Okay. Apparently his helmet's you... off even more in this season than it was last season. They have this opening scene where he fights a whole bunch of elites like one on one in a row and it's like super action packed with the helmet on and then it's just off for like the rest of the two episodes that are out. 
you can tell what they were doing. They were like, see, this is what you want, right? Now watch what I want. Mm. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, have you shared Vader 2 and 3 scripts with Mahler and Ryan to see what they think, or do you want to see their reaction? No, I haven't shared. They'll see it when it's out. Hopefully I'll see you guys at the premiere, either in New York or... Uh... Yeah, let's do New York. Okay. I don't know. I was thinking LA, but... I don't know. We'll see. Kenobi Hunt of the Chosen One, my FF Disney's Vader vows to get all of the ancient Jedi armor meant for Chosen One. Uh, Kenobi Quinlan Voss and Ahsoka must stop him. That's his fan film or his fanfic. Hmm. It's greater than Disney's trash, he says. <gasps> oh, so cool. Phantom Menace is my favorite. Justice for Qui-Gon. He's dead. There's a rumor that Hayden Christensen will be voicing Shadow. The right, I saw this. You think you can see him in that role? Absolutely. I love him in that role. Are you kidding me? Be cool. Yeah, I've, I've seen that a bunch, but I don't know if it's real or if it's just people trying to speak it into existence. Hayden's a talented actor, dude. He can do anything. Where do you think in the next game where they would take Cal next? I got to find uh, a way to fucking kill him somehow. Well, he's dark now, so you know he's probably going to be with uh, Marin. They're probably going to have a kid, or they're going to train Bode's kid to use the Force and have magic. I think he's going to find uh, a grown-up <laughs> Omega from Bad Batch. Yeah, Ryan, read some of the poems from Gary. No thanks, those are secret. Oh, of course they are. Who'd they send them to? Ryan? Thank you all no, for... Getting together, you are navigating a razor's edge all the time. As far as folks' delicate sensibilities, just be you. Also, what do you think about the supposed rival of the Star Wars resort? The rival. Revival. A revival. So people talking about the fact that they might uh, do something with Galaxies, uh, not Galaxy's Edge. Um, Star Cruiser. The Star Cruiser. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they, they took a big tax incentive to shut that thing down. So I think they're going to not get that tax incentive if they use it in any way. Um, I don't know if they're going to turn like, I think realistically you could turn it into like a little couple hour experience and it would be cool. I mean, it wouldn't be cool. It'd still be like dumb and stupid and shit. But what I mean is it'd be cooler than being locked in there for 48 hours. I think they're learning. Um, I think they're learning. They need to start going back to the OT. Yeah. Uh, They'd have to change all of Galaxy's Edge to do that. They could do it, man. To changing a set. They could do it. Yeah, like, right now, I mean, you just went there, but it's um, the entire Fucking thing set on boring. Batu or whatever. It doesn't look like Star Wars. It just looks like you're in a random rock formation. Yeah, literally. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, like, it, it wouldn't take much to turn that into something else. No. Just switch it around. You just make all the props and all the environments and everything, and then just like within probably two weeks, they could switch everything out or cover it. I don't know. It's, it shouldn't be difficult. Will there be any scissoring? Okay. We can only hope. When and how will they bring back Mace Windu? Well, I'm doing that. So. Well, Sa Samuel Jackson said he's down with it. He's down for a Mace Windu Disney Plus series. Expect mm -hmm. it to be really underwhelming. That's all I got. Favorite Star Wars spaceship? Mine's the E-Wing and the Republic Consular cl class class cruiser. And looking to get a saber for my birthday. Are yours durable? Yeah, they're very durable. It depends on which one you get. I mean, obviously, if you get the the <clears throat> you get this blade, obviously, this has more of a you know this RGB. Sorry, not RGB. SNV4 or Profi or Xenopixel, something like that. These have electronics inside. Right there, I don't know if you can zoom in. So the whole thing is, you know, it can change colors. It can, you know, from here, and you get an equal distribution of colors uh, within the blade and brightness. Whereas if you go, let's say, a um, RGB or... Oh, I'm forgetting the name now. But anyways, the other one is a hollow tube, and essentially the light comes from the hilt. And that you can, I mean, you can beat the shit out of that thing and you just have to replace the tube when you want. There's no electronics inside, so it's much more durable. That's baselet. It's called baselet. Um, so it, you, know, but um, you can still duel with 
either of them. It's just, you know, one's going to be a little more expensive than the other. One's going to be a little more durable than the other. What's that? The sad thing uh, I was surprised by was the, like, medieval, where it was, like, uh... Wait, was like fun. that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was really, I was like, what the fuck did it break? <laughs> I was like, why is it making these noises? I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, you can do any, there's a T-Rex one. Do you, did you get the one with the T-Rex font? <laughs> I don't think, I think I went through them. I didn't see a T-Rex one. Oh, but... fuck, that one's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let me know. I can switch them up for you if you want. Sweet. But going forwards, we're going to try and have uh, some exclusives from Kyberphonic, which are going to be pretty dope. Oh yeah, my favorite would probably be the Scimitar or the ETA two, uh, ETA Actus two, ETA. Can I throw in the tie interceptor? That thing looks cool, yeah. right? Interceptors are awesome. Freaking yeah. tie defenders, pretty fucking dope. Although it's pretty OP for a, a ship. I like the Stealth X. I think the Stealth Xs are cool that the Jedi use um, with the shadow bombs. Um, so you'll probably hate the smaller, but at, at some point in the, in the expanded universe. Jedi start um, taking the propellant out of like uh, proton torpedoes and packing them with beradium, which is basically like fucking C4. And they just release them from the halls and then use the force to telekinetically fucking like throw them at shit. Um, obviously in, in zero gravity, you know, it's probably a little bit easier. That sounds more reasonable though. Yeah. And, but they, they, they have uh, stealth X's, which are X wings that are essentially painted kind of like a stealth fucking bomber that we have now in terms of uh what it does like little gradations everywhere to try to so it doesn't catch uh very big um like radar patterns and they're painted with kind of a star pattern so they're really tough to pick out by the naked eye do you guys remember those fucking useless tlj bombers yeah <laughs> <laughs> huge slow and they destroy each other when you blow up one <laughs> god damn Smaller favorite movie. Hey, Theory, I wanted to say it was awesome to meet you at MegaCon. It was awesome to meet you too, Brian. Hopefully, I can see you and Ryan there next year. I'll be there next year. I'll be there next year. Yeah, man. It'll be a blast. Can't wait. Is it going to be February again? Yep. It's going to be. We talked about it earlier this stream. It's going to be the same week as the Super Bowl. Right. I was wondering if you could read my super chat from the beginning of the stream. I'd like to know your thoughts. Thank you for all you do. Uh, Mike, I, I wish you would have just. It does, yeah, uh, that does happen with so it. So, Mikey, for twenty dollars, my hope came true over the weekend. They announced they're going to re-release the Phantom Menace in theaters on May third. I'm definitely seeing my favorite Star Wars movie on the big IMAX screen. Will you three see it? That's cool. I I'm definitely going to go see it in theaters. Yeah, I don't know if it's releasing in IMAX anywhere, but uh, I'll definitely go see it in theaters. It's the first Star Wars. Well. I don't think I went to see the special editions in 97 when they were released. Um, I think it's the first Star Wars movie I saw in theaters was Phantom Menace. Yeah, me too. I know I saw, a, I eventually did see re-releases, but yeah. Yeah, I'll probably be down in Orlando so I can see it with uh, Balin and, and Will Peej. I think that'll be fun to see with the boys. I don't know, we plans to do that. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely go see it. It'll be good. I find it crazy how out of touch Lucasfilm is when it comes to the High Republic and how they are banking on it being the future when no one cares about it. I, I don't I, I don't think they're really banking on it being the future. Um, you know, they released the books, they're not doing anything. They're still going and publishing stuff, but there's no there's no energy surrounding it. We've got one tie-in series that's the Acolyte. It takes place at the end of the High Republic, but I don't I don't feel like they think that's the future. I don't. They're delusional if they think so. I, I truly believe that there are so many other interesting things that they can talk. You know, the Acolyte is an int uh, High Republic's a really interesting time. It's kind of like, I wouldn't even say in between the Old Republic and prequels because it's like closer to the prequels. But um, yeah, I don't know. From everything I've heard and read, it just seems lame to me. And and there's some people that really like it and cool, but like, ah, it just seemed boring for me. The the one of the problems. Did you read it? I read the first book. Uh, I haven't really caught up or kept up with a lot of it since then. But I want. I read Charles Souls. Was it Light of the Jedi or the first one that was out? Um, not. I don't think it was a very good book, and I think it was a lot of trying to introduce you to a lot of fucking characters that you mm -hmm. did not care about, which is tough to do in a book like that. But. 
I think the biggest problem when it comes to that is they, they shrunk the timeline from, you know, 20,000 years, basically, yeah. of the you know, Republic exist, Republic's existence to like yeah. a thousand or something right. crazy. And they right. shrank the time in terms of inner uh, like hyperspace travel. I think they like only recently discovered that in like the galactic timeline. That's such a dumb fucking thing to do. Because yeah. now you've completely written yourself out of so many millennia worth of stories that you could tell. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a really stupid decision for them. And I don't really understand why they did that. I don't either, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I feel like the book was focusing on way too many characters, like you said. And, you know, I think one of the best books that they made was the uh, Drew Carption Bane trilogy. Where it just kind of focuses on like Bane, dude. Like you just focus on one character. You can have supporting characters like the the what was it the Brotherhood of Shadow, what were they Brotherhood of Darkness, Brotherhood of Darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can have all that in there. Lord Khan. Yeah, but like it just with with High Republic, it was just too all over the place. Too many characters to focus on that you don't really care about right off the bat. And um, for me, that was a little bit hard to get into. I, I love the Darth Bane trilogy. And that's the interesting thing is that first book, especially for one book, Bane is the main character, but it does yeah. cover a lot. And you, you get this understanding of what the Jedi and Sith have been going through that they've been kind of fighting these battles for forever. You've got this new brotherhood of darkness on one side, you got Lord Hoth and the Jedi on the mm. other side. I fucking love the first book. Yeah. Um, and you know, Bane, comes up with a very clever way to eliminate a lot of Jedi and basically all the other Sith in the galaxy yeah. because what and it's it's the initiation of the rule of two and from the perspective of when we listen when we hear only one Sith there are no more no or only two Sith there are no more no less kind of seems weird like why would you do that um and I think the Bane novelization does a good job of showing you his perspective on why he felt it was necessary because the more Sith there are, the more they fight amongst each other, the weaker ones will gang up to defeat the stronger because that's like their nature. So yeah. you really have to limit it because of the nature of the dark side. And obviously there's problems with that and there's flaws in that thinking, but it makes sense from his perspective and what he's trying to do and what he's trying to develop. Yeah, I do. I loved it. It's really kind of portrayed the Sith as like an animal kingdom, like a jungle sort of, and uh, like hyenas almost with the lower tier ones. It was cool. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Can't wait for Bad Batch 3. I missed your live watch along theory, but I'm sad the show's ending though. Yeah, you know, it's an entertaining show. It's fun to watch with the community, but it, yeah, I guess it's time for an end, but they'll probably have the same characters in other shows to, to be honest. Probably God. Omega. I'm going to watch along. Yeah, got you. On a scale of 1 to 10, how preachy will Acolyte be? Twelve. We'll see. Thanks for getting to my previous question. Star Wars Disney is like American car companies, especially during the late 80s to early 2000s. This is what you want. Trust me, bro. <laughs> uh, they'll make a Mace Windu show where everyone just shits on him the whole time and then some chick alien takes credit for all of his accomplishments. <laughs> it's talking about fucking secret invasion. That's what happened that to Marvel. Yeah, pretty much. Jesus. With uh, Sam Jackson's character, what was his name? Mick Fury. Fury. Yeah. Everyone liked Fury. Not anymore. Do you think they brought Ventress back to save the captive Omega because they couldn't have a group of men save her? <laughs> wow. No, because I mean, the whole Bad Batch, there are a whole bunch of men there. So, wow, one of them's missing now, I guess. And, and I don't He's even dead. know if those... Yeah. I don't even know if it's uh, full-on, like present day or if it's a flashback well, tech has to be dead nah dude he's a little i think he's a lot like of i don't think the series is very good but at least like that moment is like that that's you know a moving moment you know if you've got attached sure. to these characters at the end of season two yeah let those moments be you don't have to fucking ruin all those moments by letting all these fucking motherfuckers survive yeah. Right. It's okay to let people die, especially yeah. if they, you know, die in that type of way. Yeah. Just not Luke or Han. Yeah. And like, listen, Wade and the Obi Wan. I'd feel the same way if they brought Wade back for an Obi Wan season <laughs> two. Right. We saw an incredible. 
you know, mm. finality for his character. He doesn't need to come back. Yeah, his finale was just as long as his introduction. Hey guys, love the new Monday live show, Star Wars Theory. When does your full Theory Sabers website drop? Currently saving for a blade. Keep up the great work, everyone. Thanks, Spooky Sith. We're working hard every day, man. I just hired another web designer. As you know, websites are super expensive, and Vader Episode 2 is costing an arm and a leg every month. So trying to really, uh, you know, um, budget everything, but it should be hoping it's ready by March, which would be great. It's going to be a very beautiful website, very extensive, and uh, it'll have everything that you would want. You know, legacy hilts, custom hilts, custom builds, empty hilts, uh, and uh, then eventually we're going to go back to the original, which is like original theory savers, which will be um, a section there that will offer only my hilts exclusive. Can you read my message from the start of the stream? I feel like that's... I'll find it, Lucas. I'm scrolling up. Um, you move on to the next one, I'll find it. Oh, I got it. Theory, can you have Qui-Gon Invader 3? Also, we have a Phantom Menace watch party in May. Uh, Qui-Gon won't be in 3, but uh, Phantom Menace watch party in May? Yeah, we could do that. That'd be fun, man. Thanks, Lucas. I managed a movie theater when The Force Awakens came out. I did my own marathon after hours with Blu-ray connected to the digital projectors. One movie a night, six days. That's awesome. That must have been yeah. amazing. Yeah, I would do That's that. That's crazy. Too. Yeah. Good to see Ryan on here. What's up, low watermark? What's up, low watermark? Thanks, man. Yeah, we tolerate him. <laughs> Is he one of your boys? Yeah, yeah. He's always in my chat. He's good people. Ah, he's a member here now, too. Thanks, man. Thanks for the big dono. Really wish Disney did a Vader film, Maul, or even Thrawn instead of the Ray stuff. I would really be hype over a Star Wars What If. Well, man, you know, it's not like you got a YouTuber that's making a major Star Wars fan film about Vader. So stay tuned, bro. I'm telling you, this will be better than the official stuff. At least what we're getting now. Theory, you and Mauler should play this game called Suicide Squad. It's pretty fun. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on the rule of two? Uh, I guess it depends. Do you mean like a broad execution of like an entire system or that a character would think it's a viable way to maintain power? Because I can buy that Palpatine would engage in it thinking it's beneficial to keep himself on top sort of thing. But like, I don't know enough about Sith lore to know whether or not this was an insanely stupid idea like that destroyed their whole culture or not. So, like I said, the Darth Bane trilogy is a really good um it really gives you really good insight because for that it was just this like never ending war between the jedi and the sith and the sith always they always ended up losing because they were fighting against themselves and the jedi in a way and bane kind of identified that due to the nature of the dark side you have to you, you have to limit the power and you have to be secretive and you have to like work from the inside and all these things and he set in motion a, a thousand year plan that eventually came to fruition palpatine uh is not like I, I don't palpatine is in my mind not a true believer in the rule of two palpatine saw it as a means to an end um and he was able to outsmart plagueis and eventually kill plagueis and uh, that, that's why you see him having really no problems with um utilizing other force users and bringing on darth maul while he was still an apprentice to plagueis while the argument being he never really revealed the full plan to maul shit like that uh, what, what's your thoughts on Palpatine? Was he a true believer in the rule of two theory? I think he just wanted to hold power forever. Mm, I honestly don't think Palpatine gave a shit about anything other than, yeah, holding power. So he'll say and he'll do whatever. Like, he, he had no allegiance to the Sith. He didn't care about anything, man. He just, he would use and abuse anybody for more power, more information, whatever he needs. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. So, I mean, like, he... Well, even Plagueis, man, he had, like, seven different disciples all throughout the galaxy that he was kind of testing to see who would be the number one. Yeah, like, almost all the Sith break the rule of two in a way. Um, but the, the premise is for there to be a master and an apprentice, and for the apprentice to become more powerful than the master so that each successive master of the Sith is more powerful than the last. That's the theory, right? 
Um, so you shouldn't be waiting until someone is like old and decrepit to finally challenge them. You should be challenging them at the height of their powers. And if that apprentice were to fail, you, you go find a new one and train them up. Um, that, that, that was the theory behind the rule of two. Yeah. But even before Darth well, Bane ends up getting defeated by Zana, he's already really questioning whether this is a, a proper way. And if you if you don't have someone that's coming, if you don't have if you have someone that waits too long to challenge or whatever, or if you made a mistake, you spent 20 years training this person who will never be more powerful than you. Have I made a, a like a grievous mistake in like making this the Sith ideology? Yeah. And, and the whole thing about, you know, like how Plagueis was teaching Palpatine and then during that same time Palpatine had Maul, he just like didn't call him his apprentice. He called him a Sith assassin. Like all of a sudden that makes a big difference. <laughs> so the difference was basically, and the thing is they never intended for Maul to become a Sith, right? They yeah. literally just trained him as a fucking weapon. Yeah. Um, uh, he was just a fucking weapon of aggression to send out there and kill people. The difference between that and some of the other ways we've seen the rule of two be broken is that Plagueis was well aware of it. Right. Um, Plagueis was monitoring Palpatine training Maul. Um, Plagueis's entire thing was he was going to end the rule of two basically as well because he wanted to find the key to immortality and him and Palpatine were going to rule forever. Like that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. What's up, ZFT Films? Yo, Theory Epic meeting you at Megacon. If you have three minutes in the Minecraft, I'm the Minecraft guy and posted my vlog and pant re review. Will you review my review and perspective? Sure, man. I'll check it out. Pant review? It was, it was great. <laughs> uh, he probably typo. Dude. I don't know. Well, I'm kind of interested. I'd like to see these pantaloons. Yeah. yeah no. Rent a theater, watch the movies as a meetup. Yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah. How many Star Wars books have you read? Ryan. I don't know, fucking 120, 130, something like that. If like, you're just counting like actual adult Star Wars novels, if you're counting the all of them, like young, the kid shit, I, I don't fuck a lot. Because like those Jedi Apprentice novels, there's like, there's like 20 or 25 of those, of those. and they're short reads or whatever. So a lot. If you're just talking about like actual no shit Star Wars novels, everything, 120, 130. I would say everything. 200? 200 plus. Yeah. If you what, what what then you got to include comics. And are you including single issue comics? No, no, we're just, graphic no, we're novels. Just doing, we're just doing print. We're just doing yeah. That's crazy. I guess you guys are never. I'm gonna, on the record. Ryan knows so much more than I do when it comes to Star Wars lore and expanded universe. Like both of them know so much more than I do. <laughs> That's what makes us a trio. <laughs> it is an interesting like di dynamic between us. Yeah, it's cool. And we're friends. It's nice. It's cool. it, it, yeah. I enjoy I enjoy the dynamic. It's fun. We're coming up on just the end here. I guess you guys are never watching Clone Wars. Feels like each week you go, oh, it'll be next week, guys, and then you have some sort of excuse. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it's been pretty busy for me. Uh, you know, travel, yeah, traveling for three weeks, and it's only fair with the the big trip you guys did. The, the, I would obviously get in the way. Like the the this you know mm -hmm. we we'll, we can make th this thing if we had for example if we wanted to bring on Gary next week, which we can ask if he wants to. That wouldn't be the week where we talk about Clone Wars. Right. And then if the following week some huge news came out or something, or like mm. several episodes of something came out, it's like, yeah, so that wouldn't be the way. It's not like we're trying to annoy you guys or bait no, you. No, no. I am. Or, um, he is. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, I'll I'll try and get it watched in general, right? And then the second I do, I can message both of you and say, like, I'm I'm good to talk about it now whenever. So Yeah. So you know, know we'll we'll definitely get to it for sure, I think. But you know, like when we say we're going to do it and talk about it, we say that because we're excited at the idea and the you know a lot of interesting things are going to happen. We're not doing it to annoy you guys by baiting things. Yeah, we don't want to piss you off. No, you know, no, not at all. Mahler's the only one who hasn't watched it. So. I Way hope to Palpatine... spotlight me, bro. <laughs> Palpatine never wrote poetry about Anakin. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this shit's <laughs> real. Shit weird, dude. All right. That concludes the end of the Super Chats, I believe, unless there were a few I missed. I'm sorry if I did. But uh, we appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoyed today's Monday show. We're back at it. We'll see you guys next week with possibly, maybe, Gary, which would be always fun. Um, proud to be part of this based-ass community. What's up, Boba? Baba? Baba. Lando? What's Baba. up, dude? Thanks so much.
new member from the Raven. We love you guys. We will catch you next week. Check out everyone's socials. It's all linked in the description below. And check out theorysavers.com. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. Bye.